Welcome to ESPN's College Football, presented by Cars.com. 20 years ago, they affectionately dubbed this place the Swamp. It's been insufferable for opponents ever since. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Today, the Bowling Green Falcons out of the MAC, taking on the Florida Gators. As the college football begins in earnest, a time of renewal, rebirth, and brand new ambitions for college football teams all across the country. It's about time to get it popping off. I'm Mark Jones along with Brock Hewer, Jessica Mendoza down to the sidelines joining us in just a few moments. Brock, coming off a seven and six season, the fans here at Florida very disappointed. And now in the wake of that, they're looking at a quarterback in controversy of sorts to begin the year. A bit unique in college football to be a top 25 ranked team and be unsettled at the quarterback position. So unsettled to the point this afternoon, we will see Jacoby Brissett, Brissett and Jeff Driscoll rotate snaps between the first and second quarter. It's a story that Will Muschamp wants to see end today. He wants a starter to be named next week going down to Texas A&M. Tantamount to a live audition of sorts here at the Swamp today. And here come the Gators onto the field. ESPN's College Football, brought to you by State Farm. For auto, home, life, and banking, get to a better state. AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. And new Dr. Pepper 10. 10 bold calories, 23 flavors. A sense of curiosity and anticipation here at the Swamp by the Florida fans as they look for their 23rd consecutive season opening win. Mark Jones back again with Brock Hewitt. Brock, we talked about the Florida quarterbacking situation and the controversy of sorts. The one thing they should be able to hang their hat on, though, is defense, right? This is a really good group. This was a group that was number eight overall a season ago with a really poor offense on the other side. We know this about the SEC. It's a game that's won at the line of scrimmage. And Florida defensively especially is as good as anybody in America. You're going to see that on display today. And Bowling Green, they better be ready. A lot of guys on that Gator defense expected to play at the next level on Sundays. For more on the opponent and some of the whispers and murmurs from Bowling Green, here's Jessica Mendoza. I spoke of Bowling Green yesterday, and they had a very strong reaction. What they felt was Florida using a two-quarterback tryout against them. In fact, their strength coach laid into them early in the week and said, hey, they're treating this like a scrimmage. How does that make you feel? It should fire you up. Their defensive leader, Boo Boo Gates, told me that they're not only fired up, they're definitely going to use that to fuel them, and their main goal is to make both quarterbacks look bad so there's no decision even post-game. Well, Florida... Jessica winning the toss, deferring to the second half. Bowling Green will receive the opening kick. And back deep, one of the big-time playmakers, Boo Boo Gates, number 24. A dangerous kick returner and defensive back for Bowling Green. And you'll notice that one of the rule changes this year, you'll see Florida kicking the ball up from the 35-yard line as opposed to the 30-yard line. That changes up a whole bunch of variables, Brock, doesn't it? And we'll talk about those as the game goes on. Especially for Florida, that's got one of the best kick returners in America, and Andre DeBose. Gators and Falcons ready to turn the page on a new season. And we are underway. They took it away from Gates. Now to the 16-yard line, it's John Pettigrew for Bowling Green, and that's where quarterback Matt Schiltz will take the range of this Falcon offense. A 6'3", 220-pound junior last year, put up some pretty good numbers, over 3,000 yards passing, 28 touchdowns. Brock, what do you expect to see from him? We just watched an Ohio quarterback out of the MAC go to Penn State and win, an experienced quarterback. That's what Schiltz is for Bowling Green. Three years under center. He's got to be very calm today around and surrounded by many inexperienced wide receivers. Had a lot of talent graduate last year for Bowling Green, in particular, Lamar Jordan. First down and 10. They'll spread it out. 
And Schultz fires a strike to Joplin, his roommate, for a completion out to the 23-yard line. And the only receiver returning for Bowling Green with a reception a year ago, Jelani Jenkins, Jonathan Bostic. I mentioned the front four. These are their two linebackers. Jenkins, a weak side linebacker, can fly. 4-4 four, four in the 40. And his buddy right next to him, Bostic. High football IQ. A senior raring to go. Second down and about three for Bowling Green. Anton Samuel, the deep back out of the eye. can see where this noise might become a factor three on the play call Samuel takes it makes a nice cut over the 30 pardon me the 25 yard line and brought down at the 26 by Matt Elam one of the impact players as well there he is number 22 for the Gators but it looks like he got enough for the first down and Samuel the Mac freshman of the year a season ago not ideal size. He's going to take some punishment today, but let's watch this play clock. A no huddle group is Bowling Green. On second down, they're taking it all the way down. Dave Clawson knows he can't go mano y mano with Florida because he tried to limit some of the plays today. What kind of number would be good in terms of plays for Bowling Green? They could keep it at 65 to 70 plays. I think that's an ideal number. This time. Nice penetration up front by Sharif Floyd, who moved inside to his more natural position. That's going to be a loss of about two on the play. And Floyd is a monster. He's going to be a first-round NFL defensive guy, just a true junior. I don't know if that will be this year or next, but Dan Quinn, his defensive coordinator, coached eight years in the NFL. As you said, he flopped him from outside to inside to really maximize that size and strength that get off in the middle of the line of scrimmage. Sets up a second down and 12. out of the shotgun steps up and fires incomplete at the 29 yard line that was intended for John Pettigrew good pressure up front by McCray It'll be third down and long coming up and I could read your body language next to me you popped up you throw it late in the <laughs> flat against a team that runs the way that Florida runs at every single position defensive line linebacker safety you mentioned Elam earlier, probably the most explosive player for Florida. He will be moved all around the football field this afternoon. Shields under heat. Completes it out to the 30, but that's going to be short of the first down. Pettigrew able to catch this one, picked up six, but good heat up front by easily that time and it's fourth down coming up for the Falcons and no surprise no surprise early to see just a four-man rush Dan Quinn wants to see that group up front get home with just four not have to blitz a redshirt freshman left tackle and Fawn Cooper the pressure is going to be on him all afternoon to keep his quarterback's jersey clean Brian Schmidebush is punting Andre DeBose standing at his own 20-yard line for the Gators Bush gets off a great spiral, driving the balls all the way back to the 16. Tried to pick up another block and is brought down at the 24-yard line. A 54-yard punt, eight yards on the return. Who will be the quarterback to take that first snap? We'll find out on the other side. College football in high definition is presented by Vizio. Welcome back, everyone, to the Swamp. It's the SEC on ESPN. Zeros on the scoreboard. It's taken about two months to find out who exactly the starting quarterback would be for the Florida Gators. And we are still awaiting that first snap. You see Jacoby Brissett and Jeff Driscoll both coming onto the field. But who goes under center? It's going to be Brissett taking the snap. Interesting. We'll leave it at that for now. Brissett hands it off to Gillisley and nowhere to go. He's stopped up at about the line of scrimmage by Paul Swan. Now let's see which quarterback comes off and which stays on the field. I can't imagine you're going to see the two quarterbacks 
an awful lot. These are not wildcat quarterbacks, though Driscoll can run very well. Will Muschamp said each would play a quarter and he would evaluate the hot hand. Reset got snap number one. I anticipate Driscoll will get this first quarter of play. There's Driscoll lining up under the center. Billisley the deep back out of the eye. It looks like the first quarter is going to be Jeff Driscoll, who hands it off here to Gillisley on second down. Breaks a couple of tackles and makes it out to the 35. Right at the first down marker, picking up 10. Island Ward making the stop, the safety for Bowling Green. You mentioned this yesterday, how much you respect Gillisley sticking around here. A lot of kids transfer. They don't get the playing time behind Demps and Rainey the last few years. Not Gillisley. In fact, he pronounced there anybody that would listen. 1,500 yards. 24 touchdowns, his goal this season, a very physical running back at just 200 pounds. Pretty lofty ambition. First down and 10. Dunbar motioning to the top of the screen. Pass complete. That hit right away is Latroy Pittman. Picked up about one on the play. Stopped by Gabe Martin. Hey, as Driscoll fires that strike, what do you make of the fact that Muschamp had both quarterbacks on the field for the first play. I think that's a statement of respect to both of them, how close this race really is. Will Muschamp told me very specifically three things yesterday. Personality, competitive edge, athletic ability. That's what he's going to be looking for. That tells me that accuracy, fundamental, statistically, these two were even throughout training camp. Now he wants to see who can carry the team on their shoulders. A different environment with live fire. Gillisley. Between the tacklers, and it's knocked down at about the 37 yard line by Dwayne Woods, a first team all MAC player, picked up about two on the play. A second down and eight for Florida. This Florida team didn't score a lot of points last year, Brock. Struggled in so many ways. When John Brantley went down, Driscoll went in the game as a true freshman against Alabama. That defense last year in the second half played in five games total. Brissett played in eight with two starts, and they both have a new offensive coordinator this year. Boise State's Brent Peace comes over. That's why you will see lots of motions and shifts. Gillisley emptying out the backfield. Four, three receivers on this board. Driscoll fires a strike in the middle of the field. Reed. And Reed down to the 45-yard line into Falcon territory for the first down as we go back to Reese Davis in the studio. Reese. We have got a wild one going on ESPN2. Taco Bell Studio update. Northwestern and Syracuse. Northwestern at one point at a 35-13 lead, but Ryan Nassib to Christopher Clark. Nassib has thrown for 459 yards and four touches. Orange up by six late in the fourth. What a great game there. 16-yard pickup by Jordan Reed. Bootleg action. He's a pretty good runner. And he's brought down short of the 40, picked up about five on the play. And Brock, that's one of the things that differentiates him from Brissett, isn't it? Both are really similar athletically. Both six foot four, roughly 230 pounds, but Driscoll brings this element. A little bit more of a natural runner. As Will said to us, Must Champ, a running back when he breaks the pocket and breaks contain will really, really be imperative when each of these kids gets a quarter of action to keep the ball moving. I think that's the single greatest. It sounds very simple. It's very basic, but find ways to stay on the field. Move the chains. Convert third downs as he did two plays earlier. You just want to see points scored when you're battling for your position. Hines and a tailback take the toss, and they're going to blow this play dead prior to the snap. First flag of the game. Before the snap, false start. Offense, number 87. Five yards from the previous spot. Second down. Will Muschamp wasn't too happy with his team the last time they played here. It was a loss against Florida State to end the season. And he was very frank and brutally honest in saying, we're soft and we didn't play tough. And that's going to change. And it seems to have, at least in his perception, during the offseason. Now he's going to get a chance to watch for four quarters of his team up front, and that's especially offensively. That's really what he was talking about. Can they slam it down people's throats in Bowling Green? would be a good test this afternoon. Mac Brown in a tailback takes the handoff. 
And gets to the 45, picked up one on the play. And I'll tell you why Bowling Green will be a good test. It's not because they're loaded with SEC talent in their front seven, but they will load the box. There will be extra defenders in there today. And those stats, and the minus 12 in particular, you go seven and six when you have minus 12. You're lucky, in fact, to go seven and six. Often you can go four and eight. Their defense saved the offense last year many, many times. And that group is veteran up front. They are physical, and they've got to make a statement this afternoon. Third and long coming up for Jeff Driscoll. And another penalty against the Gators. That was Jordan Reed, who took off well before the snap. And herein lies some of the issues when you've got two different voices. False start. Offense. Number 11. Five How yards so? from the previous spot. Third down. How so, Brock? When you have two different cadences and two different guys leading, their voices are just different. You've got guys amped up today. That happens the first week of the season. That offensive line is, is raring to go. And you hate to make excuses, but I promise you some of these people sitting in these stands are saying, see, that's the problem when you have two quarterbacks. You don't have one voice leading it, and it leaves Will Muschamp, as we saw earlier, scratching his head. Darius Hines in the backfield. Third and 14 now, Driscoll. Stays in the pocket, had a man wide open at the 32-yard line. Quinton Dunbar slipped and fell. And it's fourth down, they're gonna bring in the punt unit. I think he fell because he sensed that ball was going to be high in behind him. Very basic zone defense. The completion is there. And as you see, Jeff Driscoll was either expecting Dunbar to settle down. Dunbar runs the in cut, sees the ball high in behind. And Florida misses on what should have been a third down conversion. Ryan Burbrink is standing on his own 10 yard line as Driscoll will have to wait until the next series to get his next opportunity. Remember, each quarterback going to get a quarter in the first half, and the coaches said that they would reevaluate after. Oh, they almost got to the punter. Kyle Christie just getting it off. They brought a little bit of heat. Ajay Barema came with a little bit of pressure and missed it by that much. A 38-yard punt. ESPN's College Football is presented by Cars.com, where confidence comes standard. And in part by Toyota Care, caring for you and your car. Back under a radiant sky here in Gainesville, Florida. 6.53 to go in the first quarter. You're looking at quarterback Matt Schiltz of Bowling Green. This is their second possession of the ball game. Pinned down at their own 11 yard line. Schiltz fires complete to the tight end. And it's a first down out to the 34 yard line. Alex Bear with the catch as we go back to Reese. Mark, you got to keep it on. Watch ESPN or ESPN2. This Northwestern Syracuse thing has been wild. Trevor Simeon, sophomore from Windermere, Florida. Demetrius Fields got one foot down. And with less than half a minute to go, the catch back on top, 42-41. A great finish coming up there. That pass incomplete. It's being intended for Ryan Burbank. Well, we talked to... Quarterback Mac Schiltz earlier in the week and asked him about his goals coming off that 3,000 yard passing season. It was interesting. Brock, you said, Hey, I think we have the best team in the MAC. You know, want to win games and lower my turnovers. Ohio may say something a little different. Yes. 10 win team that, that went in, as I said earlier, to Happy Valley and beat Penn State today. But this, this bowl aspirations are very real for Bowling Green this season. So trying to get back to his first bowl game since 2009. Completes this a little bubble screen. Trying to get to the edge, but stopped up at the 38 yard line. Number 16, Jerron Stokes, the Michigan transfer, picked up a couple. Purifoy making the stop for the Gators. The one advantage of a 30 year starter at quarterback is very decisive. And you don't see Schultz holding the ball today, He's getting it out of his hands. And you will see Florida on the other side play a lot of man to man coverage. They want to challenge Bowling Green and all of that inexperience at wide receiver. 
When I asked Schultz about it, who are his go-to guys, said all of them. I feel good about my receivers one through six. I'm going to give them a chance to make plays for me. Time for one here on third and six. Schiltz has a man complete. And a nice move out to the 45 by Gallon, who picked up some extra yards. Got eight in all for the first down. The first-year quarterback doesn't make that throw with that kind of anticipation. Watch your receiver, Gallon, come out of break, and the ball is right on him. You better get your head around, young kid. Redshirt freshman making his first playing action. Still, it's very sharp here to begin this game. Purifoy missing a tackle on that play, too. Something that you might see a lot of in the early part of the season. First down and 10 for the Falcons. Hand off to Samuel. Another nice burst near another nice first down run. Across the 45, a pickup of 11. Taylor making the stop. For those people that don't know, Dave Clawson and this program at Bowling Green went to a bowl year one, really rebuilt from the ground up, redshirted a lot of his young kids, growing pains the next two years at two and 10 and five and seven. This season, he was very clear with us. For the first time, in his opinion, they look like a Division I team. Their size, their strength, their speed. And right now, they don't in any way look intimidated of the Swamp. Well, his knee touched Brock a little bit before that first down marker. They're going to say second down and one. Four receiver formation. It looked like Bowling Green called a timeout just before the... Play clock Time expired. Out. We're going to take one right along with Holy them. Great. Dick Clawson looks like he feels pretty good about his team so far. Back after this. Welcome back, everyone. Mark Jones along with Brock Heward and Jessica Mendoza down in the sidelines here at the Swamp. If you're wondering what's happening, they're officially reviewing the spotting of the ball after the last play. And Brock, that gives us a quick moment to take a little inventory with this Bowling Green team. They're trying to spot the ball from the play prior to the timeout. When it appeared as if there was a first down game by the Falcons. Back to the big picture of Dave Clawson's team, a team that's uh, picked to finish second in their division this year in the MAC. Trying to get back to a bowl game for the first time in three years. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The ball carrier was short of the line of the game. It will be second down. Bowling Green will not be charged with a timeout. So there you go. The spotting of the ball was correct on the Anton Samuel run. A lot of time to think about this one. This is generally a part of the field, second and short, with as much man-to-man -man coverage as Florida plays. Coaches like to take shots, especially on the road, when you get into your opponent's end of the field. Samuel. Gains about two on the play. Tough sledding up the middle. Bring it to Hunter and Floyd and McCray as well. That Florida defense last year, a top ten defense, although that time Samuel did get enough for the first down. Takeaways, though, a big issue for Dan Quinn, the defensive coordinator. Takeaways and sacks. Just 14 a season ago. Dropped 14 interceptions, according to Coach Quinn. Those 14, the lowest since that stat began back in 1950 with the Gators turning. Schiltz. Pass is complete to Ryan Burbrink. Burbrink, an interesting story. He's a walk-on and still without an athletic scholarship. And uh, the general rule of thumb they use at Bowling Green, I'm told, is that if, uh, you know, if get enough plays and snaps, that he's pretty much guaranteed a scholarship next year, but a great story for them. The general rule of thumb in this system for your quarterback you just find completions even three yard ones on first down Schultz hands it off to Pettigrew and 
Pettigrew trying to move that pile inside the 40 to about the 39. Got one on the play. McRae and Morrison making the stop. Brock, let me ask you about this no huddle offense, this pace, this tempo. In the heat, can they keep it up? Be a tremendous challenge, especially since they're only going to rotate one other offensive lineman through. We've already seen the Gators substitute out their entire number two group. They can handle the heat, Mark. If they find a way to get ahead in this game, you sure feel a lot less exhausted on the road when you can get points on the board. Third and six coming up. A little pressure coming, the pass complete, and a first down at the 29-yard line. Burbrink again picks up nine, and they move the chains. What's the formula for the Falcons winning this one against Florida? A lot of experience. Third-year quarterback that we've already seen play with tremendous anticipation. Just like that third down, he recognized the nickel blitz off the edge. He hits his outlet. You've got a freshman of the year running back that can balance out some of that passing game. And then this group is pretty physical. Chris Jones, defensive tackle, I said in the open, could play in the SEC with his size and strength numbers. Dave Clawson said, we can't match the speed of Florida. There's one Falcon that runs a 4-4-40, but physically with their size and strength, they feel like they can match up in a roughing the passer tacked on to oh, yeah, this that third was down. It was a love bump, but it was really late. You didn't call it that when you were playing. <laughs> <laughs> Under three minutes to go and another flag on the field. Leon Orr up front for the Gators may have moved. Ball start. He was drawn off. Offense, number 55. Five yards from the previous spot. First down. How much of that, Brock, is typical of an early season game like today? How about a redshirt freshman making his first start? You had a left tackle, 79, Fawn Cooper. That's your right guard, Alex Huddle, number 55. Both freshmen playing in a very hostile environment. No scrimmage up in Ohio is going to get you ready for this heat, this humidity, and this noise. Tenth play of the Falcon drive coming up. Look at that clock and the two minutes in the first quarter. Schultz completes the pass on the screen. Brought down at about the 20-yard line. It's Burbrink again, tackled by Josh Evans. And that possession doubly important because, number one, it's going to give Driscoll on the other side. If, indeed, Will Muschamp sticks to his plan of playing the quarterbacks quarter by quarter, Driscoll's had one opportunity. And Bowling Green, the more they can limit the speed and playmaking of Florida on the other side, the longer they stay in this game. Schultz has hit his last five passes in a row. That grew the back beside him. Slings it again, complete. And a broken tackle. Out of bounds at about the two-yard line. Great play by Chris Gallon. Purifoy missing another tackle. And it's first and goal for Bowling Green. We talked about the man-to-man -man coverage. Dan Quinn, the defensive coordinator in Florida. Likes to play aggressive. That's Purifoy. Led this team in tackles as a freshman on special teams a season ago. Has already had two missed opportunities today. Schultz standing strong. Getting the ball out of his hand. Finding completions. And his guys on the other end, as he told us, they're making him look good. And it grew the back. Low snap for Schultz. Barely got it off under duress. Good heat up front by the Gators defensively. And it'll be second down to goal and another flag throw. And I think they're going to get a hold, possibly on Elam, the safety who comes down and covers in the slot here. You've got points on the board as a quarterback. Not time to force it on the road. Schultz does the right thing and throws it away. And yeah. we've seen a lot of penalties yeah. here in this first 15 minutes. Jonathan Bostic was there applying the pressure for the Gators, the middle linebacker. 125 to go in the first quarter and according to that formula you just alluded to one quarterback oh, going to get the first on the defense number 31 during a legal forward pass play on an eligible receiver that penalty is half the distance to the goal automatic first down so it's going to be first and goal that penalty against Riggs this is one of the challenges when you're a spread gun team John Pettigrew became their short yardage back number 20 powerful kid some awfully good scrimmages. 
He's the guy they want to run between the tackles in these short yardage situations. It's 5'8", 178. Gets the call here. The counter stick. Straight ahead. Nothing doing. Stocked up short of the line. And second effort. Keeping it alive. Touchdown. He was initially denied and unremittingly kept going. He appeared to be stopped. And the Falcons have struck first. I think Dave Clawson likes that effort out of his senior running back 650 pound squat. So John Pettigrew brings to the table at 180 pounds and he shows you that tremendous leg drive and leg, leg strength. He almost lost him in the tall timber there Brock at 5'8". And there's a Florida player shaken up on the field. It's Matt Elam, one of their key defenders in the secondary. And it looks like a shoulder anytime a player favors an arm like that. Elam, their most dynamic, explosive player defensively. And Bowling Green matching the physicality of Florida here in the first quarter. Pettigrew with his second rushing touchdown of his career. The extra point good and the silence here at the swamp is deafening right now seven nothing the Falcons with the lead Samuel got it started and Pettigrew with the last word there Falcons with the lead when we come back welcome back everyone to Gainesville an epic matchup is featured in the Cowboys classic on ABC Brady Hoke's eighth-ranked Michigan Wolverines rolling to Arlington for a showdown with Nick Saban's second-ranked Crimson Tide. Saturday Night Football presented by Windows as part of Dick's Sporting Goods kickoff week. Michigan versus Alabama tonight at 8 on ABC. And one of the most dynamic players in college football, Denard Robinson, the quarterback in Michigan, will have some sort of say in the game and the outcome before it's all said and done. Michigan's got to find a way like Bowling Green did and has done in this first quarter to get their playmaker in space. Give Denard Robinson a chance to go one-on-one -on -one with Alabama and avoid all that game tackling, all, all that Bowling strength Green. Crimson Tide have in their front seven. Anthony Farinella, Anthony Farinella will kick off and Andre DeBose is back Debose. deep for the Gators. As dictated by the new rules, Farinella kicking off from the 35 this year. Skies it and it comes down to the 20. It's live. And the Gator is going to have poor field position back at the 16 where Gillisley finally corrals it. Let's go back to Reese in the studio. Mark, let's take an innovative look at Heisman frontrunner Matt Barkley brought to you by ATT. This from the Oregon game last year. And you know about Robert Woods and Marquise Lee, but. Barkley, when he goes on the roll, doesn't get locked in on one guy. Also, also can find the tight end, Randall Tell, for USC won that game. I would say Barkley was positively Heward-esque in his decision-making there. Heward-esque. Ah, I like that. Precise, I'm guessing. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Well, speaking of quarterbacks and accuracy, Jeff Driscoll with his second series here with only one and change left in the first quarter. Completes the pass on the outside to Jordan Reed. Who had an earlier nice reception and run. He picks up five on the play. Hey, Brock, you only got a minute left for this guy. Is that enough to evaluate here? Looks good, forward? looks good on paper, doesn't it? The day before, the game plan, our defense will force three and outs. We'll have lots of drives, lots of possessions, and this is it. The, now, now the coaching staff didn't make it clear that if Driscoll can get a drive going, I doubt they're going to pull him out mid-drive. I, I would think this drive would continue. But important here for Driscoll to do what Schultz has done on the other side and move the chains. Second and five, Gillisley wrapped up and stopped right around the line of scrimmage. Good play by D.J. Lynch. Limiting that game to just one. It'll be third and about four. You just watch the Bowling Green Falcons creep closer and closer to the line of scrimmage until a young quarterback can beat you, not with swing passes, but beat you down the field. Bowling Green will continue to load that box defensively and make those running lanes very, very compressed. Not sure gonna, they're going to get this play off with two seconds to go. And that's the end of the first 15 minutes of play. 
Muschamp said that Driscoll would get the first and Brissett would get the second. We'll see if the change happens here on the other side. Welcome back, everyone, to the Swamp in Gainesville, Florida. I'm Mark Jones, along with Brock Heward and Jessica Mendoza down in the field. College football presented by Cars.com. It's the SEC on ESPN. That is Jacoby Brissett on the sideline still. Jeff Driscoll is still in at quarterback to begin this second quarter. He has had all of nine plays, so not a huge body of work to evaluate what he's done. Third down and four for the Gators. They're still trying to sort out their starting quarterback situation. That pass complete. And a nice catch by Trey Burton for the first down out of the 26. What do you make of the pass that time by Driscoll? He needed that pass. Otherwise, he wasn't going to throw one to the second half, if at all. Will Muschamp has said each of these quarterbacks will play a quarter. If that's incomplete, he's done because I think Brissett's coming in. Instead, zone coverage, find an easy completion. I like the call from offensive coordinator Brent Peace. Got to find a way to get these quarterbacks in rhythm. It's hard enough to do with one, even more challenging with two. First down and 10. Driscoll didn't get a lot of help in that first quarter. The result of a lot of miscues and penalties. Gillisley with a gaping hole up the middle. And a first down out of the 43-yard line before Hunter finally made the stop. Mike Gillisley, the 5'9 senior, finally getting his opportunity after backing up Chris Rainey and Jeff Demps for years. And a chance to get to the second level. You see the linebacker Lynch tied up there. You get this kid into some room, some green grass. He's going to move the chains. Amazing what one third down conversion can do to a huddle. Just settle everybody down. Out to the 43-yard line. After that 17-yard gain, they go with Gillisley again. Down at about the 48-yard line. Got about six on the play. And I like that statement. If you can run at eight-man boxes, and that's what Bowling Green continues to throw out there. Their mantra today is we have got to. We can't line up against these guys man-to-man. -man. We have got to overload the line of scrimmage and then ask these young quarterbacks who are fighting for their jobs, fighting for that starting spot, try to put it on their arm, not the legs of Gillis Lee, and not this line of scrimmage that Florida over time should dominate. Look at the number of the Falcons around that line of scrimmage. A little fly sweep here. This is Patton. And Patton run out of bounds uh, at about the 46-yard line. Picked up six on the play. And another first down by the Florida Gators. Interesting, Brock. We were looking at some of the numbers. And when you look at them rushing the ball like they just did, or Gillisley prior to that, they haven't had a 1,000-yard rusher since 2004. What do you make of that? Tim Tebow had something to do with that. Okay. With as many yards and touchdowns as he had. Urban Meyer never had one in his years here. And Will Muschamp's recruiting a different kind of back. You're going to see Matt Jones as well today, a freshman at 215 pounds. Wants to bring more of that downhill physical element. An offensive line improving as well. This time they get to the edge. Nine stepping out of bounds. They're going to mark it at about the 37-yard line. A nine-yard gain. And to that point, you have Gillis Lee at 5'11", 209. The other three backs we expect to see today, Mac Brown, no relation to the guy that <laughs> must champ coach for. Richard Sophomore, he's 215 pounds. That's Hines. He's 6'2", 220. And as I already referenced, the true freshman at 215 wants that physical nature. Feels like in this SEC against LSU, against Alabama, against the elite, you've got to have that run downhill nature flag down and uh, we've seen a lot of linen on the field this afternoon this one on the far side of the field at about the 35 before the snap false start offense number 11 five yard penalty still second down that's the fifth penalty against Florida and the second one against Jordan Reed number 11 guys antsy guys ready to go I know what the line of questioning is going to be after the game. Will Muschamp will deny all of it. It's not two quarterbacks. It's not splitting reps. It's not hearing a different voice. Some of it, he's right. It's first game jitters. Guys trying to get in the flow of the game. Matt Jones. Great spin move. And a first down at the 25-yard line. Let's go back to Reese in the studio. All right, Mark.
Mark. Time for Sports Center right now, presented by Discover Card. Bill O'Brien's debut at Penn State ends in defeat to Ohio U. Tyler Tattleton, old Fruit Loops, Mickey Tattleton's son, a big day to lead the Bobcats to the huge win. Urban Meyer's debut much more successful, fell behind 3-0. And ended up winning 56 to 10, well over 400 yards of offense from Braxton Miller. All right, Reese back here, first down and 10 after that 17 yard gain. Hines trying it up the middle, got about two yards on the play. Brock, you alluded to it a moment ago. Will Muschamp remaking this Florida team in a different way. How do they look different? They're downhill. And Urban Meyer won two national championships here. So for anybody to say they were doing something wrong, you're missing the boat. But they were a stretch team. They were a zone team. They were a read option team. And he wants them to be a downhill team. He wants Boise State's power run game, big backs, physical nature. As I said, in this SEC, he feels like to win it, that's what he needs. And I would agree with him. Second and seven. He keeps those legs pumping and falls forward to about the 16-yard line. Picked up five on the play. And, you know, there was a misconception that at Boise State, it was all chuck and duck and slinging the ball, but they really ran it a lot more, didn't they? 51% of the time last season for Brent Peace, the offensive coordinator that Will Muschamp hired here to bring that element. You're also going to see over time many different roles established with the Trey Burtons, the Jordan Reeds. They need their receivers to step up. You may see even more extra run here early in the season as those receivers need to grow. Third and two, Gillisley had a lot of resistance on the right side of that offensive line. It looks like he's stopped up just a little bit short. Fourth down and short. Is this a situation where you roll the dice a little bit? This is go zone. Yeah, it, everything that we've just talked about for the last five minutes about what you're trying to create, the identity of your offensive group. Yeah, and you can see him grabbing that kicker. I don't want to three points. <laughs> I want my big fellas and I don't care how many guys are around that line of scrimmage in Bowling Green with Florida not throwing the ball continues to put more and more bodies to the line of scrimmage. About a yard short of that first down the 12th play of the Gator Drive coming up. Let's leave the deep back out of the eye. Driscoll gave it to the fullback the first man through Jordan and it appears as if he got enough for the first down. Hunter Joyner. 5'10", 250-pound sophomore keeps the sticks moving. You know what you would like to see here, and maybe over time with a quarterback that you gain the trust of a little bit more, with 11 guys six yards around the line of scrimmage, you could not have a more opportune time for a play-action pass. We have seen run, 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 run this entire drive other than the third down conversion. Now is the time for your play-action pass. Jeff Driscoll is gone from the opening drive up until now for Florida. We get to see Jacoby Grissom. Six down the sidelines. Gillisley! Touchdown, Gators! His running back Gillisley, one speed. Plant that foot, get in the ground, get downhill, and a tremendous block from his fullback Joyer as well. A 15-yard touchdown run for Mike Gillisley, which is the 11th of his career. And we are tied. Gillisley said, hey, coming into the season, I want to get 1,500 yards and 24 touchdowns. Well, number 23 has 23 to go. After this, back with more on the other side. Blue and orange, the dominant colors here, and welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. We're the Swamp in Gainesville, Florida. Mark Jones along with Brock Heward, Jessica Mendoza down on the sidelines. An impressive drive by Florida a moment ago. Dick Sporting Goods kickoff week continues with the Chick-fil-A kickoff game tonight on ESPN. Dabo Sweeney's Tigers take on an Auburn team poised to improve on both sides of the field. Number 14 Clemson against Auburn tonight at 7 on ESPN and also live on Watch ESPN presented by Hampton Hotels. Two years ago you won a national title and now you've changed both of your coordinators both offensively and defensively. We talked about a change in identity here. 
How about Auburn? Both they offensive and wow. defensive coordinators knew. West Malls on now with Arkansas State. Splits it down to Boo Boo Gates. Picks it up at the seven. And Gates takes it out to the 24 yard line where Caleb Sturgis, the kicker, brings him down. Let's take a look at that last drive for Bowling Green. What jumped off the page at you, Brock? That Schultz had his number one option every time. These are progression reads. He's seeing man zone, and he's getting the ball out of his hands in a hurry. That, that's how you negate a really good front seven and defensive line. Don't allow them the time to get home and hit you. And that was a statement play. Short yardage on the goal line. Pettigrew showing you his strength and determination. Bowling Green came to play this afternoon. Schultz passed for over 3,000 yards a season ago. Samuel in the tailback. Schultz has spread it around quite a bit today amongst his different receivers. Doing it by committee. That one almost picked off, broken up nicely by Jalen Watkins, the six foot junior. And as talented as this group is, Mark, I am sure there was a conversation after that last drive to close some of these cushions. And you're in man coverage, you're in zone coverage, tighten up the windows. You're quicker, you're faster. Don't give those completions up. Make it more difficult for this offense. Prior to that incompletion, Schultz had completed six in a row. Handoff. Samuel broke a couple of tackles and made it out to the 27-yard line. It'll be third down and about six to go. Are you surprised that Bowling Green has moved the ball as well as they have against this top-rated defense? To a degree. I think what's more surprising is how many broken tackles. Typically, when you're overmatched and outclassed physically, it shows up in tackles. You're just getting beat down. And Bowling Green, once again, and that play representative of it for Dan Quinn's defense, in one-on-one -on -one situations, they're breaking a number of tackles. Schultz almost intercepted again by Jalen Watkins. Broken up. He was looking for Chris Gallon. It'll be fourth down. And it's a quick three and out for the Gators defensively. And that's exactly what Florida needed, exactly what Bowling Green could not afford because now the 80,000 here at the Swamp, after a dominant run-heavy drive from their offense, just a possession ago, gets a three and out and will get the ball right back. Ida Bush is going to stand on his own 12-yard line. You saw him roll out and use that kind of rugby-style punt last time. Andre DeBose is standing at his own 22-yard line for Florida. Good punt. Schneiderbush. The Bows at the 22. Found an alley. And Schneiderbush in on the tackle on Bowling Green's side of midfield at the 47 yard line. Time out on the field after that 32 yard punt return by DeBose. Let's see who the quarterback's going to be. Will Brissett get his turn now? ESPN's College Football, brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. And Buick, experience your kind of convenience, peace of mind, entertainment, and luxury. Well, we have a new quarterback for the Florida Gators. For the first time in the ballgame, taking the snap, it'll be Jacoby Brissett. The 6'4", 230-pound sophomore will get his first snap under center here. Through two touchdowns against four interceptions in limited action last year. First down and ten. He'll start off with good field position and sling it right away. Incomplete. There was a little bit of downfield contact intended for Andre DuBose. What do you make of the fact they opened it up for him right away, Brock? I like that call a whole bunch. That's Brissett's strength. It is his arm talent down the field. And fifth. 20 of those plays, excuse me, 20 of those plays of 25 for Driscoll were run plays. So you figured that play action pass and that shot was coming. Brent Peace told us yesterday, I'm going to call four or five shots. And I did that at Boise State. Kellen Moore hit him. We need to hit him tomorrow afternoon. 
Second down and ten after the incompletion. Gillisley the lone back. Set hands it off to Gillisley. There's a flag down on the play at the 45 yard line. In the vicinity of holding typically. Personal foul, chop block, offense number 66. That penalty is 15 yards from the previous spot, second down. That from Hubert Owens, our referee. Let's go down to Jessica on the sidelines. Well, guys, after Jeff Driscoll missed a wide open Quinton Dunbar in that first series for Florida, Dunbar came to the sideline. First guy he found was Brissett. They had about a heated discussion for about two minutes where you could tell Brissett said, I got gotcha. you. I got you on this. Driscoll came over a couple minutes later and said, hey, man, I'm sorry. I just slipped. Part of the uh, perhaps uh, opening season miscues and maybe some nerves. Second and 25. Brissett. Steps up in the pocket and is brought down at the 40-yard line. It'll be third down and long. The sack by Charlie Walker. And that penalty costly. And add that to the miscue roll that is growing by the minute here in the first half for the Florida Gator offense. Brissett doesn't have the get up and go that Driscoll does. When the defense wins on the back end, that's the one element that he needs to develop. Whether that's finding a third or fourth outlet or breaking that pocket just a little bit quicker so one element that Driscoll brings in this competition that Brissett simply doesn't have. Looking for a little bit of separation between these quarterbacks here. Set. Plenty of time. Completes it. That's going to be a first down at the 41-yard line to Quentin Dunbar. Actually, the spot is going to be just a little bit short. Let's see. Yeah, he's short of the first down. At the 41. And Driscoll comes back in the ball game after that 18 yard completion by Brissett. Fourth down, they're going to go for it here. Fourth and six. Driscoll, the better runner of the two, could be punting. They pooch it. And, well, I'm not sure that they wanted it quite around where they ended up getting it spotted. They're going to spot it closer to the 25 rather than inside the 20 somewhere. That was a disaster. <laughs> we know why he's a quarterback now, right, Brock? <laughs> Back with it more. Seven seven on the scoreboard a little bit of a disjointed performance so far by the Florida Gators brought to three false starts going track and field when you have a false start you're disqualified you can't do that here of course <laughs> well in football it keeps a game that you have outclassed your opponent physically at seven seven and many of those mental air self-inflicted wounds that drive coaches crazy couple that with a chop block a roughing the passer giving Bowling Green an opportunity to stay in this game. First down and 10 for the Falcons on their own 26 yard line. Matt Schultz in the offense. Bowling Green not too successful. They had a three and out last time in. Under some heat, incomplete at the 29 yard line. Intended for Alex Bayer, well defended by Jelani Jenkins. Have you seen the difference these last two drives? That touchdown drive where it was up and down the field. It was completion, completion, completion. Taking that first option. Really the last two drives here, Florida's gone to a little bit more zone coverage. A two deep safety look, closing some of those windows up and allowing this defensive line that really is the strength of the group to get home. and not much room on that left side of the offensive line. Cooper trying to lead the way. Well, folks, with just two races left until the chase, Greg Biffle, Jimmy Johnson, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. are locked in while Carl Edwards and Kyle Busch and Jeff Gordon battle for wildcard position. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series in Atlanta, Sunday, 6.30.
on ESPN. Coming up right now, a pivotal third down. How important for them to get a little rhythm back offensively here? Oh, huge. Huge from a momentum standpoint. Florida rotating their fresh defensive starters back in. You better get the ball out of your hand. Schiltz, a little backside pressure. And incomplete, another three and out for the Falcons offensively. Good heat by Dante Fowler. Now Schiltz has missed on his last four pass attempts. You can sense one. that Florida defense yeah. coming on a little bit. And that's the one element, Mark, as you watched film and we looked at these guys offseason that just jumps off the video at you, and that is that front four's athleticism. It's a trademark of this conference. It's what distinguishes the SEC from the, wet, the rest. It's why they've been six-time consecutive national champions. Florida's got the boys up front. Smida Bush, high snap. And they blew it dead. Flying down at the 25 yard line. Before the snap, false start. Offense, number 14. Five yards from the previous spot. Fourth down. Hey, our guy Hubert uh, Owens, our referee, getting a lot of face time today. Still indicative penalty. of opening games <laughs> as you watch around college football today, and everybody expects these guys to be perfect. They don't get a preseason. As Dave Clawson knows. Yeah, they can scrimmage, and I like what he said. Is how do you get ready for the play, the heat, humidity? He said they bumped up their scrimmages from 90 plays to 120 plays to really force the issue. Once again, from a physical standpoint, they're not backing down. They came after Smidebush, and he just got it off in time. Elam almost got there. The Gators, for the second consecutive time, almost got there. And it wasn't a great punt by Smidebush. The Gators will have great field position when we come back. Oh, it's time for our Aflac trivia question. Missed that duck during the offseason, Brock Heward. Can you name the two schools that have had three different quarterbacks win the Heisman Trophy? Uh, ruminate that for a while. We actually got this one in our production meeting last night. I'm not trying to sound immodest, but it might be, well, it might be the only time that I get one. Goes down both drives. Starting inside the 50 the last couple of times. Gillisley. Oh, he shook it. Touchdown, Florida. Mike Gillisley with his second touchdown run of the day. Gators starting to find a little bit of offensive rhythm here in the second quarter. Extra point is good, and uh, boy, Jacoby Brissett looked good on that series, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, any quarterback looks good when he gets a handoff, and your offensive line and fullback, they set the tempo. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to the SEC on ESPN. College football presented by Cars.com, part of Big Sporting Goods Kickoff Week. Mark Jones along with Brock Heward and Jessica Mendoza down in the field. The Gators finding a little bit of traction offensively here in the second quarter. What do you attribute that to? The boys up front, and, and we talked about that in the open, that this would be all about the line of scrimmage. Gillisley, the benefactor, he makes the safety miss on a couple occasions to get the big play down the field. That Falcon team that is sitting under the blistering sun on their sidelines, the Gators in the shade, is starting to take advantage within the front seven on both sides of the ball. And the new 
touchback has it come out to the 25. Reese, I've waited eight months to say back to you in the studio. <laughs> We've got to get together more in the offseason, Jonesy, so we can practice and get our rhythm. Duke Johnson, the freshman from the Miami area, playing for the Hurricanes against BC, went for nearly 2,000 yards, 29 touchdowns in high school, and now he has one as a cane, and it puts Miami up 21-17. All right, thanks a lot, Reese. Uh, Al Golden facing a unique challenge down there in Coral Gables. It's a flag on the kickoff. Still trying to figure this out. Uh, Dave Clawson having a chat with the referee. Outside on the kicking team. Number 15, at Pelton's five yards, added to the succeeding spot, first down. The ball now at the 30-yard line, first down and 10 for the Falcons. Well, the last couple of times they've had possession, it's been successive three and outs. For Matt Schiltz. That rhythm that they had early in the first quarter. Seems like distant memory right now. Samuel on the handoff. That was the left side of that offensive line. To think about two. Let's go back to the touchdown. And what was the key to for success on this play? A lot has been made of the strength coach here at the University of Florida. And take a look. Take a look at the number of guys locked up. And when they get latched on, they don't let go. The one guy who's unblocked. That's Paul Swan. He takes a bad angle and it's over. You want to look at your strength, coach, your weight room, that body of work in the offseason. When you get latched up to guys and don't let go, that's a level of physical domination this group didn't have a season ago. Now you're talking about Jeff Dillman, the strength and conditioning coach for the University of Florida Gators. Will Muschamp, the head coach of Florida, says our team is bigger, stronger, and faster and tougher than they were a year ago. Their first timeout of the half. Dave Clawson calls timeout. Time now to uh, take a look back to the answer of our Aflac trivia question. Can you name the two schools that have had three different quarterbacks win the Heisman Trophy? Aflac! Amen, <laughs> Mr. Duff. The answers? We're here. Florida, Notre Dame. Don't you love the statues? You have Steve Spurrier, yeah. Danny Werfel throwing it all over the place. That guy Tim Tebow. This is a little good. different. Yeah. yeah. I can't believe that. That's. I think that's the first time we said Tim Tebow since we've been here. That's, that's an aberration in itself. It took us almost a, a full half. 4:19 to go in the first half, and this is the season opener for both Florida and Bowling Green next week. Florida with. The first of two tough road games coming up. They'll take on Texas A&M. That's a good shot right there. You wondered in a competition, would these two guys be talking to each other? Would they be helping one another? Would they be hanging out? I watched them at walkthroughs, spent a lot of time together yesterday. And all you're doing is handing the ball off. There's a lot of similarity between your jobs. That pass incomplete. Schiltz. Good pressure up front by Matt Elam. Pass intended for Chris Gallon. It'll be third down and eight coming up. A really critical third down here to move the chain. Something they did in their initial drive, their touchdown drive, the last two, three and outs has really changed the momentum in the stadium. Schultz may have to buy some time and make a play here on third down. Intercepted. It was intended for Chris Gallon, and for the third consecutive time on offense for Bowling Green, it's a three and out. And the Gators will get good field position once again after this punt. 
the pocket is getting condensed. Those windows and zone coverage are getting smaller in this secondary for Florida that you knew would start to establish its will, its speed, its quickness. It's starting to get real tight on those receivers. Life's getting hard for Matt Schultz right now. Defense that was top 10 last year. A lot of talent back as well. Snyderbush. As it bounce and it takes a Falcon bounce all the way down inside the 15 at the 14 yard line a 54 yard punt nothing on the return Mark Jones along with Brock Heward and Brock what do you make of the quarterbacking audition so far by the Gators a uh, reset has been in for the last couple of series uh, but his sample a little bit smaller very difficult to judge and maybe in a good way for Will Muschamp because his team's doing what he wants them to do and that's to run the ball that is that aggressive downhill nature that no matter how many bodies around the line of scrimmage we still run right at them so from the valuation your guess is as good as mine because both of these quarterbacks I think you could do what they've done it's largely hand the ball off and watch that offensive line running game get busy said it again looking out of the shotgun Fires it incomplete intended for Frankie Hammond Jr. And second down and 10. Brissett threw two touchdowns against four interceptions last year. Actually, last season he became the first true freshman in school history to take his first career snap as a starter. That was a game against LSU, and that's not an easy opponent to come in against. For Driscoll, it was Alabama in the second half. For Brissett, it was, as you mentioned, LSU and the full complement of the Tiger defense. And it was an eye-opening experience for both of them. Both of them were not ready for that moment. Back Brown in the tailback. He takes the handoff with a counter play. Brown makes it out near the 20-yard line, sets up a third and about four to go. At what point do you, do you start not just handing it off and, and getting a, a few more intangibles in the mix to evaluate your quarterbacks when the game is out of hand and we're nowhere near close right now at 14 to 7 will Muschamp knows that and this is yet again another critical third down and and this is where the evaluation becomes very important for these young quarterbacks Driscoll had a big third down conversion on their first touchdown drive this is a big one here to gain field position I'd like to see Brissett play this fast empty backfield now anticipate Bar motion down. The set completes it, stood in there and fired a strike out to the 26 yard line. Pittman makes the play, and there's a look at uh, Brent Peace who has to be happy about that. And what a great shot. And you could feel his body language, couldn't you? He's saying, Get up tempo, let's go, let's go. I don't want to languish. I want to set the tempo that starts with the quarterback, get the ball moving. First down and 10. Matt Jones in the ball game. The set completes another one. That's to Dunbar. Dunbar with a nice move after the catch out near the 35 about two yards short of the first down It's hard for any freshman to play with anticipation It's very difficult against LSU or Alabama to look comfortable You should be able to do that at home week one against an opponent that you're bigger faster and stronger as a quarterback You can dictate that with your sense of urgency Hands it off this time to Jones and Jones with nowhere to go they're gonna lose a couple yards Number 90, Jarius Campbell making the stop for Bowling Green. How much do you learn about a quarterback when you're when you're going quick? It's almost a two-minute drill situation that they're in. You love these moments because it shows how much command he has. One thing to get in and out of the huddle, it's another to control the game from right there. The line of scrimmage, your protection calls. And I said, play with a level of anticipation. They hand it off to Jones again into the boundary and nowhere to go he makes it out to about the 34 yard line stopped by Paul Swan Brent Peace is letting you know exactly what he thinks of that run effort there in that push up front this offensive line is supposed to be much improved from a season ago and in flashes they have been we've seen that I think both of the touchdown runs that last one that I highlighted were physically that was right at him what did you see there you saw a little bit of the zone read that stretch I think if Brent has that one back, maybe he tries to run right at Bowling Green rather than laterally. Herbrink standing at his own 25 for Bowling Green. Or may have been an opportunity for Brissett to not hand that ball off and instead to tuck it in him get those yardage. The Lear game, offense, number four. Pillow is five yards from the previous spot. Still fourth down. 
Not a well executed first half for the Florida Gators. Several untimely penalties. Not that there's ever a good time for a penalty. One and a half to go here. Herbrink watches it bounce at the 33. And another flag down at the 45. <laughs> And there's see times, what this one's about. And there's times, Mark, and you've seen this in your many years, where some penalties you can overcome. The number and the multitude here for Florida and the significant yardage has really hurt any rhythm, yeah. both offensively and defensively for them. Eight penalties for a total of 56 yards against the Gators. Bowling Green committing just two. Yeah, this game a lot closer than a lot of people thought it would be at this point. Let's be honest. Bowling Green is... I guess made the most of their opportunity so far. During they would the take kick, it. Personal foul, number eight on the kicking team. That penalty is 15 yards from the end of the kick. First down. Let's go back to Reese in the studio. All right, Mark, coming up on the Lexus halftime report, the debut for Bill O'Brien at Penn State turned into a monumental win for Frank Solich and Ohio. Urban Meyer gets a victory in his lid lifter at the shoe. And we'll look ahead to Michigan and Alabama. Mark and Lou will be here. How will Michigan deal with A.J. McCarron? It's a little bit of a twist on the quarterback plot, isn't it? <laughs> All right, Reese back here. Hey, after the personal foul, Brock gives them pretty good starting field position with just a minute and 18 to go here. They have a chance to maybe get a field goal on the board or maybe a little more. Once again, when you get the 15 yard penalties and those varieties, they really set up real estate for your opponent. And let's see if Schultz can get back into that rhythm he found early. Handles the low snap. That pass incomplete. Tell you what, there hasn't been much room for, for him to fit those passes in. It's as if every pass is hotly contested. Second down and 10. And you've got Watkins, a junior. He's played a lot of ball. Roberson on the other side started as a true freshman a year ago. What did defensive coordinator Dan Quinn tell us about his secondary? They're long. And when you're long and physical, it really condenses those windows for the receiver and the quarterback. Schultz has missed his last seven passes in a row. Hey, what do you know? Another flag. Movement up front. McCray and Cooper. Let's see who it's on. Offsides. Defense. Number 34 in the neutral zone. Causing the offense to react. Five yards. That one against Second McCray. Down. And Florida now with 10 penalties. It's one thing to have some early game jitters. You can maybe explain away a false start or two. This is becoming an epidemic. Schultz has missed his last seven passes. See if he can find one here. Instead, they hand it off. This is Martin. And another flag on the field at the 50-yard line. You have, may have multiple flags here. The back judge through, the side judge through. It's just gotten very ugly here. Offsides, defense, holding, offense, number 55. Old Tell you what, is offset. Will Muschamp is on a slow down. boil right there. He can't be happy about the inordinate amount of penalties stacking up against his Gators in this game. Second well into five, double digits now. 109 to go in the first half. Falcons run it again and find some room on that left side of the offensive line. Martin finally stopped by Bostic. Hey, what do you make of the matchup between Cooper and the Gator defensive front we talked about at the start of the game? He's holding his own for a freshman. You just don't want your number called a bunch, and it helps that his quarterback has still thrown the ball away. That, that pocket has gotten a whole lot tighter over the last 15 minutes of play, but you want to help a young offensive line? Find some balance in your offense. Find a way to run the ball a little bit. Give that defense eight eight, something else to account for. Picked up eight for the first down. Shields wide open and dropped. 
by Joplin, his roommate. And he had a lot of open real estate in front of him. Instead, it'll be second down and 10, and you talk about a missed opportunity. You said it earlier. You asked me the question. It sure seems like these receivers are like Velcro with the defensive backs. The one time that Joplin has some room, he didn't know what to do with it. He took his eyes off the ball and didn't finish. At second and 10. He catches it. Well, he dropped this one, too. And a defender hanging all over him, though. And quickly, it's third down and 10. Jalen Watkins defending that pass. But that was definitely a catchable ball. And those are two critical errors that you can't afford on the road. The two roommates, Schultz and Joplin, the only returning receiver with any catches, your redshirt junior, just a lack of focus and lack of finish. Gator defense can pin their ears back on this one. Falcons run it instead. Martin brought down at about the 37 yard line. Remember, there are two place kickers for Bowling Green, and uh, right now, kind of on the fringes of field goal range, Brock. A little bit of a statement here. Dave Clawson wanted to see whether or not Will Muschamp in Florida would burn one of those three timeouts. He wanted to keep the ball on the ground, utilize that clock. Maybe a sign there of some of the offensive ineptitude in the first half, and Muschamp doesn't take the timeouts. Fourth and six, complete. Great hand walking and up for the first down at the 24 yard line. The Michigan transfer, Jerron Stokes, and a missed tackle by Elam allowed it. And the first option has been there this afternoon. Schultz and his receivers have been pretty sharp. We've got a player down on the field. That's number two, Dominic Easley, down on the play. A pickup of 13, though. And this is going to buy a little bit of time for the Falcons. Not having to burn a timeout. They've got two remaining, and right now, well within field goal range of Steven Stein. And this is an issue for Easley. He tore an ACL the final home game, that Florida State game you referenced a year ago. He spent all offseason rehabbing that ACL. They gave him some time off during training camp. Asked his defensive line coach yesterday, Bryant Young, whether or not he felt Easley was all the way back, and he said he did. And it was part of the conditioning and the explosion that has to come back just nine months removed from an ACL. And you hope this is cramps. You hope it's not that reconstructed left knee. Yeah, easily one of those talented guys up front for Florida. And that's a good sign. They yeah. need him. They moved him outside. He played much more inside a year ago as a D tackle. Highly recruited kid out of Staten Island, New York. It worked his tail off to come back, get into shape off of that knee injury, and they're going to need him this year. Right, 25-yard line. Tell me about the play calling here by Coach Clawson and Bowling Green. What do they do with 16 seconds? You've got these two timeouts here, so your entire playbook is open to you, and if you're a quarterback, you have got to be careful with the ball. Schultz makes the careful pass complete to Gallon. Picked up about six on the play, nine seconds to go. You get one more off here? I think you do, and what I would love to see is a shot at that end zone. Nine seconds, you know as a quarterback, you can't scramble, you can't take extra time, but nine seconds is enough to get your receivers down the field to take at least one shot. It's your ball or nobody's ball. It's one of the hard parts about not huddling. You can't always communicate that with your receivers, but if I'm going to throw it up to one of my receivers, you go get it, nobody gets it, and we still have the three points in our back pocket. Joplin is at the top of the screen. He comes the other way underneath. The pass complete, stops the clock with five seconds to go. The catch made by Burbring. A five-yard gain and a timeout by the Falcons with five seconds to go. Do you, do you kick it here? Well, you made an easier field goal with that completion, but with five seconds, I think you're rolling the dice too much to think that you can run a play and take a shot at the end zone. You can't take that risk. Not here on the road, at the Swamp, when you have a chance to get this game to 14-10 going into halftime. To me, now is not the time to take that shot in the end zone and risk not even getting an opportunity to kick the field goal. A very demonstrative Coach Clawson there with one of his players, Jerron Stokes pleading with him, imploring him, and uh, you know they're looking at a field goal as well within the range of place kicker Steven Stein, whose career long is only 39 yards, but very makeable, eight of 11 for his career. And you know, if you ask Coach Glosson, would you take 14-10 deficit going into the locker room? You'd have to say yes, right? I mean, oh, without it, without a doubt. And they had a very brisk walkthrough yesterday. I got to see that. 
it's a quiet team. I asked a number of the members of the team if that was ordinary for them, if they were nervous. They said, no, it's very workmanlike. Dave Clawson likes this group. It's about business. And these three points getting into halftime down just 14 to 10 would be enormous. And this field goal attempt going to come from 31 yards out. Off the toe of Steven Stein. And he missed it off the upright. An opportunity gone awry. So the deficit remains at seven points. But for a team that said they were defiant coming in here, refusing to be a punching bag, that's not bad. The only thing in retrospect, if you maybe take a knee and get that ball in the middle of the field for your field goal kicker and burn that last time out, maybe that's the only thing you can nitpick. Otherwise, you feel good down just seven on the road. Let's go downstairs to Jessica with Coach Muschamp. Coach, how would you assess each of your quarterbacks in this first half? Well, again, the first drive, we, we killed ourselves with two penalties. We put ourselves behind the chains. It makes it tough for us. Uh, Jeff did a nice job on the second drive, taking us back down the field, and then we gained some good field position with Jacoby. we got to clean some, some of those things up. We're running the ball really well. we got to complete some balls down the field. Who do you think you'll go with in the second half? Well, I'm going to get in here with Brent right now. And, you know, you talked about the penalties, 10 of them, 76 yards. How do you clean those up in the second we're half? We're trying. I believe me. We're emphasizing, obviously, we're not doing a good enough job. Thank you, Coach. A very terse and to the point coach Will Muschamp in his second season here in Gainesville his team leading by seven the Gators up 14 7 to the break right now let's go back to the studio Reese Davis for the Lexus halftime report but now I'm right on some conscious I'm getting bread while I close to my accomplishments only one like I have a problem with this myself that's probably why my only competition is myself from today to tomorrow the doctor just rocked to the same drum the past no rain forgot where I came from Welcome back to the ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. As the Florida Gators look for their 23rd consecutive season opening win here at the Swamp, a place that has been traditionally a graveyard for visiting teams. And right now at the break, Florida leading 14 to 7. Mark Jones alongside Brock Hewer, Jessica Mendoza down in the field joining us in just a few moments. Brock, at the top of the show, we talked about the quarterbacking situation for Florida, how with Jacoby Brissett and Jeff Driscoll, it was tantamount to an audition. Your thoughts on how it worked out in the first half with one guy having almost twice as many staffs as the other. 70% run. That's what stands out to me with both of these quarterbacks. It's a lot of handing the ball off, and it makes the evaluation very difficult. I will be very curious to see what happens in the second half. Driscoll had twice as many snaps. He had the long possession, the long drive. But as I said, 20 of the 30, 21 of the 30 snaps for the offense, you've been turning around and handing the ball off. I mean, how do you evaluate quarterbacks when most of the evaluate actually is going to be on the, the tailback, Gillisley? For it's difficult part. to do, and that's why we come back to that point that Will Muschamp made to us yesterday, and that's the personality, the competitive edge, all the other intangibles. He knew what we didn't know, yeah. and that was that they were going to run the ball an awful lot today. Well, Florida's going to get a chance to have possession here to start the third quarter with the football it'll be interesting to see who he brings out and once again bowling green will pooch kick it down to the 23 yard line that's gillisley who had a pretty productive first half of play takes it out to the 33 yard line and let's see who comes onto the field here. It'll be Driscoll to start the second half, it looks like. He's in the middle of the huddle. Of course, it looked that way at the start of the game, and they both ended up on the field to start the game. Will Muschamp said, whoever has the hotter hand, exactly to your point in questioning, how do you even judge that? When really both quarterbacks, it was all about the run game. Let's see in the second half here who can balance out the offense, who can find some completions and hit some shots down the field to complement what's been a very effective run game. Driscoll incomplete, dropped by Frankie Hammond. And a pass that should have been caught. Well, Mike Gillisley was the key cog offensively for Florida in the first half. He of the lofty ambitions coming into the season. Two touchdown runs in the first half. Career high, 94 yards and just 10 carries. That's almost 10 a clip, and it's the one cut. 
He's gotten through that line of scrimmage clean on a couple occasions, and when he's gotten to the back end of that defense at Bowling Green, those safeties have got to find a way to keep Gillisley in front of them. He's avoided them, and thus the big plays. On second down and ten. Driscoll fires a strike to Reed and gives a lot of yards after the catch. Gets the first down out to the 46-yard line. Reed could be a big piece of what they do this year and what Brent Pease likes to do. He Brent's got to be. I'll, I'll take that word could and say he has to be for this offense and for an inexperienced quarterback. And he's exactly what the NFL loves right now. He's Jimmy Graham. He's that H-back tight end, former high school quarterback, state champion quarterback in high school, wide receiver by nature. He's put on some of that physical element within his blocking and run game. But you nail it. He's Brent Peace's guy. He's a hybrid guy that can do everything from that tight end each back position. 12 yard gain in the first down. Gillisley out near midfield at the 49 yard line. He picks up about three. Second down and seven. Trust making the stop for the Falcons. It's one thing to throw those in cuts, one thing to throw the boundary comebacks and the go routes and the back shoulders and all those things that you hope to develop out of a quarterback. It's quite another when you have tight ends that make the game so much easier. Throwing those little stick routes, those option routes, those in routes, lower risk throws to get a comfort level between a quarterback and an H back and a tight end built. That's why I'd really like to see Reed featured here in the second half. Second and seven. Little receiver screen, the pass complete to Dunbar. And Dunbar with a couple quick moves out near the first down. They're going to spot it just shy of the 45-yard line. It'll be third down and short coming up. And there's Chris Jones, the MAC leader in sacks a season ago. Very powerful kid. He, too, squats 650 pounds and power cleans 400 pounds. So you like his leverage. He has shown in conference play an ability with spin moves to get to the passer. Been really ineffective today against a massive offensive line in the middle that's neutralized his game. Different ball game in the SEC on both sides of the line of scrimmage. Third down and short coming up. Rosalie bounces it outside, falls forward, and I'm not sure that he had enough for the first down. Good stop by Dwayne Woods. It's going to be fourth and short coming up. Do you go for it here if you're must champ? I do. And, and we saw him go for a fourth down earlier on their touchdown drive. And once again, as much as we're going to talk quarterbacks today, and they're going to be talking about them in Gainesville for the next few weeks until one becomes established, this team's identity is defense and running the football. That's why Brent Peace is here to run it, to bring the physical element. You went for it earlier. I like this call again. Fourth and short. Driscoll looking to pass it. Incomplete. And the Falcons will take over on downs near midfield. It was contended for Trey Burton, but not a great pass. He threw it behind him. That's exactly right. I love the call. I really do. Fourth down, everyone's expecting run, and you've got a wide open Trey Burton. He would help him if he could just settle down a little bit, flash those numbers, but fundamentally, that's a very poor throw. Everything is going to the sidelines. What you want to see is that body towards your target. Driscoll's a guy that can make that play. He's got to make the play to distance himself in this competition. So Bowling Green with an opportunity now at the 45-yard line. And uh, in light of that would-be completion that wasn't, it'll be interesting to see who comes out in the next series before. Meanwhile, the Falcons with possession, and this is Samuel out to the 47-yard line. Been a quiet afternoon so far for the freshman of the year in the MAC last year. Ran for 844 yards at five touchdowns in just nine games. And I think that's the component here in the second half. I'd like to see a little bit more of. I know you're a pass-first offense because of your veteran quarterback, but find a way to chew up some of this clock. You want to get this fan base antsy. You want to get that sidelines a little bit nervous. Utilize the clock. Run the ball. Get this game still close to the fourth quarter. Samuel again, this time into the boundary. Made a nice move, but pursued and pushed out of bounds. At midfield by Jelani Jenkins. May have picked up two on the play, so... It'll be third and about five coming up for Bowling Green. One of the first times we've called Jenkins' name, weak side linebacker, prototypical in his speed, a 4-4 guy that combined with Bostic can really get sideline to sideline, make spread 
passing games difficult because of his kind of playmaking ability. Let's see if Schultz goes back to his roommate, Sean Joplin, who had a couple of drops late in the first half. He threw it his way, but it's incomplete. And it's another three and out, which has been a very frequent chorus, unfortunately, for the Falcons. Last few times they've had the football. And I almost consider that a turnover. When you stop somebody on fourth down, you should be able as an offense to capitalize on that on that turnover, on that stop of downs. The last thing you want to do is waste prime field position to turn it right back away. I like the run calls early, but you got to find a way to keep those chains moving. Schneiderbush has almost had a couple of punts blocked here this afternoon. They came very close twice. Elam on the last attempt. See if the Falcons make the requisite adjustments. Oh, they fake it. Schmidebush has plenty of room. Great call. And he picks up the first down at the 43-yard line, and we may have a late hit on the play as well. Dave Clawson rolls the dice and comes up with a huge play for Bowling Green. What a brilliant call, Mark. As much wow. pressure as you pointed out earlier, Many of his punts as of late have been under duress. The last thing you would think is they're going to run a fake. And instead, <laughs> and it was almost a safety fake, where if he got out there and he didn't have the first down in hand, he could punt. And instead, they're going to tack on 15 more. After the play, personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Number four on the receiving team on the defense. That penalty is 15 yards. Added to the end of the run. First down. Think this is a called play, Brock? <laughs> I do think it's yeah. a call play. I think it's a safety punt fake, where he, if he didn't have it, he could let it go. Yeah. And that's a big man. Schmidtbush is 226 pounds, and you <laughs> see DeBose taking out some frustration on a cheap shot. That's out of bounds. That there is no more clear penalty out of bounds, but the receiver teeing off on the big punter. Wow! Look at that. The ball all the way down at the Gator 27-yard line. First down and 10 for Bowling Green. What a fantastic call by Dave Fossum. That pass incomplete and tended for Joplin, overthrown by Schiltz. Let's go to Jessica downstairs. Jessica? Well, Dave Clausen's number one goal coming into this game was to keep this game close, stay in the game. He's most proud of his offense at taking care of the balls, no turnovers. One thing he wants to see his team work on is converting those third downs you just saw because his defense is getting very tired. Well, uh, easier said than done in this climate for Bowling Green. Second down and 10. Fields completes it and a big hit on the play on Joplin by Jonathan Bostic. A pickup of eight on the play. It'll be third down and short coming up. And that's a ball that Joplin dropped earlier in the game. You remember he had critical errors, back to back drops. That time he knows he's going to take a lick. That's a slant route right into zone coverage in the middle linebacker and Bostic that's waiting for you. But as Jessica said, convert third downs, third and twos, a lot easier to convert than some of the third downs they were looking for in the first half. Schultz completes it for the first down, back to Joplin. Undaunted, going back to his roommate who dropped a couple of passes earlier. He picked up eight that time, leaving Marcus Roberson on the coverage, and they keep the chains moving. Dave Clawson said we couldn't win mano a mano inside, but we had to win one on one outside. That's Roberson, six foot tall corner against your big receiver that gives enough separation for Shields to get it off. And there's just yet another one. Add that to the roll of the number of shots Schultz has taken after each throw. And off. Plenty of room inside. Touchdown, Samuel. Wow. And he mock Gator Chomp, yep. which draws a flag. Boy, that's a foolish mistake. And you just saw it coming. The referee staring it down the whole way. The mock Gator with the slash. We saw the 15 yarder that benefited Bowling Green, and Clausen's going to give Samuel an earful. You got to take this on the kickoff. A 12 yard spirited run. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct. Number six on the offense. That's 15 yards assessed on the kickoff. 
And here's a look at the perpetrator and the act. Got to contain yourself just a little bit. It looks like he threw in a little. Uh, I think the throat, throat slash, slash might have been the one. Got him. That's exactly what got him. Just two penalties for Bowling Green. That's number three. They're in this game because they've avoided some of those boneheaded mistakes. And Florida better be very careful. Just over 24 minutes left in this one. Going to say it. We're tied at 14 in the third quarter in the swamp. Bowling Green out of the back. A conference that's already had a big day. Back with more after this. College football in high definition is presented by Vizio. Welcome back, everyone, to the Swamp. Yeah, it's hot on that Falcon sideline, but they heated up the defense that time by Florida. And they were aided, of course, by that pivotal personal foul, the late hit on the sidelines. And then Anton Samuel with his sixth rushing touchdown of his career. Ties it to 14. Careful with the bows back here. They pushed it. This number four is three kickoff returns to bows in his career, and he can go. From the 15, the bows with a good head of steam. Brought down inside Bowling Green territory at the 47 yard line, a 39 yard kickoff return. Folks, an epic matchup is featured in the Cowboys Classic ABC tonight. Michigan against Alabama, number eight against number two. Saturday Night Football presented by Windows as part of Dick's Sporting Goods kickoff week. Michigan against Alabama at 8 o'clock on ABC. And uh, Alabama's defense has been pretty good over the last five years. And they return just four starters, but the feeling, I think the belief around college football as well as Nick Saban's recruited the last few years and he coaches that group should not be a significant drop off this season, but a good test tonight. Driscoll in a quarterback hands it off to Gillisley. Lacerates that left side of the defense for Bowling Green down to the 39 yard line. Hey, we talked about it during the commercial. Is the audition over now? Has next week already arrived? It's 14 all. It has to. With nine minutes to go in the third quarter and a real dogfight here tied up, it's continuity. That's the hardest part when you play two quarterbacks. And we've shown all the miscues and the false starts and the problems. But to me, the, the, the word I, that I would always use when you have a franchise quarterback, there's so much confidence and continuity within your scheme, and they've got to develop and develop it fast here in the second half. Driscoll under the center. The bootleg had plenty of time. Two Falcon defenders crash into each other. And Driscoll fires out of bounds, incomplete at the 35-yard line. Chris Jones and Dwayne Woods, there they are. They... Look like Keystone Cops there. They literally knocked each other out. That's a not top 10 play. That's a little bit more on the senior linebacker Woods because Jones is bearing down on Driscoll. And Woods, a very active middle linebacker. Been active today, running sideline to sideline. That's one of those that Woods probably looks up at him and says, dude, I've been taking it all day from the Gators. I don't need it from you. <laughs> Can't fault the effort, though. Third down and short. Still hands it off. Good penetration up the middle, and they didn't make it. Gillisley stopped up by Dwayne Woods. Charlie Walker also in on the stop. And his helmet comes off. The new rule states that he's got to sit out now for a play. And that's your senior middle linebacker and leading tackle that's going to be coming off on another fourth and one situation. And there's some of the, the frustration. Coach. That's right. Buckle up. Keep that helmet on. You're costing us here in what could be an enormous fourth down play. A defining and pivotal moment, perhaps, for the Florida Gators offensively. But first, they're going to talk it over. They call a timeout. Florida. With 8.41 to go in Still the third quarter, out. surprisingly Second tied half. at 14. ESPN's College Football, brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. And Tostitos. Tostitos knows how to party. Look at Lake Alice here, a wildlife area. Some live gators, of course. University's Bat House is near the lake. The Bauman Center sits on the southwest bank of the lake. And uh, Lake Alice's northern side, there's a boardwalk that leads visitors through the woods and the swamp. You tell me, any of these guys 
fearful of play action pass? Any of those guys scared whatsoever what that quarterback of Florida is going to do? No. When you see a fill like that on a third and one situation, they're going to make this quarterback beat them in the remaining 25 minutes of play here this afternoon. And Florida, from that position, better pick it up. Gator's going to punt it. Like inside the 10 here. Nice looking punt. And they're going to down this inside the five yard line. Nice job by Kyle Christie. A 37 yard punt, but more importantly, it's the net that counts. Well, Driscoll came back for the last series after uh, an errant throw that really was way off the mark. If today is about evaluation, these are the three plays that I can come back to. That's early in the first quarter, Driscoll misfiring. This is Brissett on a deep ball that's somewhat contested, misfire. This is a fourth down situation where Brent Peace wants to see his sophomore quarterback emerge. He didn't want to see him having conversations with his tight end. He wants the fundamentals to be better to execute in that situation. On a day that's been hard to grade because it's been so run heavy, well, those are about the three plays I can come back to where right now that grade's not a positive one. Tape doesn't lie. Worst starting field position of the day for either team. A lot of contact down the sideline, no flag, and incomplete. Well defended by Marcus Roberson, the DB. Dave Fossen doesn't like the amount of physical contact, but they'll give you some fighting. I mean, that's fairly incidental. You got to let the guys play just a little bit. I know Clausen's going to fight for his guys, but your receiver's got to create a level of separation and room as well to the boundary. Pinned up in the shadows of their own goalposts. Quick three step drop complete that time. They'll get a little room out to the seven yard line. Ryan Burbrick picks up about five on the play. It'll be third down. And about five to go. And I love both of those calls as the umpire did a nice seated roll out there in midfield. The Why do you like them? Because it's just the aggressive mindset that we're not going to come here and just run the ball and go three plays and try to punt. And a good shot here of your umpire showing his agility. Or lack or of up there. <laughs> Schultz out of the end zone and wisely throws it away. Nobody. Close to being open. That's two occasions now where I understand the play call. The thinking of the coordinator is I want to move the pocket. I don't want to let a blitz come bearing down on me in that part of the field. Let me move the pocket. But the challenge is then you cut down a lot of the field and you allow Florida speed to really cover up the slower bowling green receivers. And the last time we saw Schmidt-Bush was a fake punt. You're not going to see that now, but you better be very careful on the other end. And not hit a low liner that Florida would get prime field position. They've gotten a lot of heat on him throughout the course of the game. And he shanks this one badly. And I mean badly. It's going to be marked inside the 20 yard line at the 18. A 10 yard punt at perhaps the most inopportune time of the afternoon for Bowling Green. Continues to use that rugby rollout style. And he knew it right away. It's like my iron <laughs> shot that you shank, and you know instantly that didn't feel right. And instantly you've given Florida some breathing room and advantage here. What you cannot do when you have an opponent and you're in their place and you're making life hard on that quarterback, you don't want to give them this kind of field position. Short field at the 18. Gillisley. Tackled at the 13-yard line, picked up about five on the play, second and five coming up. And it's interesting, Schmidebush last year, going back to that bad punt, he was a Ray Guy semifinalist. 45 yards a punt, and it has been effective at times today. Now the mindset's two things. Defensively, stop, no touchdown, field goal. Your whole mindset, got to hold them to three, and if you're Florida and you're Jeff Driscoll, trust your fundamentals. Hines in the backfield. They toss it into the boundary. Hines down to the 10. Short of the first down. Third down and two here. Are you running it again? Are you thinking put it in the quarterback's arm and let him throw it? I think this is four down territory for me. That's what I'm going to tell my young quarterback with this play call or even the guy bringing it in. Hey, listen. We have got to get seven here. We're not going to allow Bowling Green to win and hold us to a field goal. It's two down territory. 
And for Jeff Driscoll, what I mean by trust your fundamentals, don't hesitate. Too many times, and on both of those misfires, you can tell he is still thinking through the game. You were the number one high school recruit at quarterback. You know how to play it. Trust your talent. Third down and two. Jones, the lone back. Little play fake. Driscoll with a nice move to get away from trouble, but stepped out of bounds all the way back. They're going to mark it at the 17-yard line, so now it's fourth down, and the field goal unit will come in. Very little room as you run into the boundary, but this will be a play. Years from now, he'll throw it right there. He had, he had Jordan Reed in the fly. It would have been a very tight, tight throw, but that's one as he gains an experience, and when you talk about anticipation and the more repetition, I know, I beat that defender. I've got to throw it now or throw it away. No chance with the field condensing, and this becomes a very big three points. Caleb Sturgis with his first field goal attempt of the season. This one coming from 34 yards out. And he knocks it through to give the Gators a three-point lead. But all in all, you have to say that's a little bit of a win for the Falcon defense. After that shank punt of just 10 yards. Florida with the lead when we come back. The 34th Street Wall is one of Gainesville's most recognizable public sites. The wall is over 1,000 feet long and is filled with messages that have proposed marriage, celebrated national championships, and raised awareness of social issues. Since its construction in 1979, the wall has chronicled the ever-changing public discourse of the students and citizens of Gainesville. Welcome to my university. Where was the Save the Quarterback graffiti? <laughs> Where's the Tim Tebow production? Welcome back, everyone. College football presented by Cars.com. Florida leading by a tenuous three points. Just a field goal separating these Gators. Huge favorites coming in against Bowling Green. And the Gators have had their opportunities at times to break this game open a little bit. But the main storyline coming into the game today was the Gator quarterbacking situation. And I'm not sure how much more we've learned about either guy so far. It's going to be the Falcons on offense, though. And a nice kick return. Boo Boo Gates all the way out to the 33 yard line. Let's go back to Jeff Driscoll and what did you see happen here? You're asking me rightfully so about production, anticipation. You tell me with Jeff Driscoll, he's got to avoid pressure. Can he throw it right now? That will be the question in the film room tomorrow, I promise you. The number of chances, yes, was it perfect? Was there a guy in your face? Absolutely. But after you broke contain, did you know where your number one was and could you fit it in? Could you make that play? Because against the tough guys in this conference, against AM, against Tennessee the next couple weeks, those windows are very tight. Those are the questions that will be asked over the weekend as they evaluate this film and hopefully a winning situation, but this game very much in doubt. Still plenty of football left. Schultz drops back, finds his intended receiver in the pass complete to Burbrink for the first down. Let's go back to Reese in the studio. Mark, time for a live look-in powered by PlayStation Vita. You can see both of these games on ABC or ESPN2, depending on where you live. Taylor Martinez having a day for Nebraska as they've just scored again, thrown for over 300 yards. Miami and BC back and forth. Canes up by eight right now. All right, thanks a lot, Reese. First down and 10 after that 12-yard gain out to the 45. Pettigrew on the run. Pettigrew picks up about six on the play. Second and four, Bowling Green. They came in and started off really great. Brock, uh, quarterback Matt Schultz, threw for 3,000 yards plus last year and had great rhythm, but then the Florida defense kind of took that away. And uh, how do they get it back here, the flow offensively? They've gotten some of those completions, the first option open, and they've also sprinkled in just enough run. Not 15. 25-yard runs, four- and five-yard runs to set up much more manageable situations. Right, second down and four right here. Another good run. That was the freshman of the year in the MAC last year, Samuel, who picks up enough for the first down. And this does two things. Number one, it slows down that front seven that we know wants to be very, very aggressive in downhill. And then number two, look at this clock. When you can possess the ball and you get this game against an opposing quarterback that's unsettled right now and you get this game into the fourth quarter while still close, that has to be advantage Bowling Green today. 
First down and 10 in Gator territory. They move the pocket again for Schultz. And incomplete intended for Joplin. Broken up nicely that time by Marcus Roberson, a guy they consider maybe their best cover corner. Compare and contrast that this throw and how tight this window is with that replay I showed you of Driscoll. You tell me if there's a difference. Look at how tight that coverage is and where he's got to throw it. And in fact, if he throws it a yard inside, as good as that coverage is, he still it's wins. Yep. And that's what you're not seeing from the Florida quarterbacks right now. Brent Peace talked about it, a level of anticipation. That's what I want. The accuracy has improved. Fundamentals have improved. Some of the game management has improved. But I need to see these guys anticipate. You're seeing it from Schultz today. No wonder with a guy that's got 22 starts under his belt. Yeah, Schultz admitted, committed to Kansas State, actually, coming out of high school initially. And then there was a uh, coaching change and changed his mind and went with his offensive coordinator to Bowling Green here, Aguirre. And uh, that's a look at Samuel, who was shaken up on that last play. And a big part of what they've done today has 10 rushes for a total of 41 yards. Are they going to look at his leg and we've got Justin Mendoza down there and hopefully get a report soon. In the meantime and in between time, John Pettigrew comes in for him. Pettigrew with the carry, got a yawning hole and it closed quickly, but it keeps those legs going. And he makes it to the 30 yard line. And it's another first down after a 14-yard gain. Hey, speaking of good motors, folks, with just two races left until the chase, Greg Biffle, Jimmy Johnson, Dale Earnhardt Jr. are locked in while Carl Edwards, Kyle Busch, and Jeff Gordon battle for the wild card position. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series in Atlanta, Sunday, 6.30 on ESPN. First and 10. Pass complete, Burbank, and run down at the 26-yard line by Antonio Morrison, a pickup of four. Do you want to know why quarterback's the most important position in sports, in my humble opinion? Tell, tell me, Mr. Quarterback. Because not just an offense, but an entire team will follow its lead. And when you have some hesitancy, and you have some doubt, and you have some indecision on one team, I think you see a group, especially offensively, that struggles. Conversely, when you've got a quarterback that's thrown for 3,000 yards and 28 touchdowns that you feel good about, well, you come into a venue like this and compete. Nobody's punching bag and a nice run again. Another first down to the 12, Pettigrew. With a lot of giddy up on that play, picked up 14. And frankly, it's why that guy, Will Muschamp, told us yesterday when we asked him about Bowling Green, conversation began and ended with their quarterback because he makes it go because of his passing game all of a sudden those safeties well they've got to respect the pass and that area around the line of scrimmage isn't overloaded with gators that are running downhill they're creating lanes it starts with the balanced passing game now bowling green really effective with the mix of running pass first and 10 from the 12 and a half really throwing it to run this afternoon Shields under center this time, backs out of the eye. He threw it away. It looked like he had Pettigrew open for a while there, Brock. But if tight and you get down into the red zone, you just can't afford to risk it down here. Not down three. That's a smart, heady play. You're right. I think he had his eyes downfield coming off that play pass where he maybe had that little cookie in front of him. Right. To well, get that, those three or four yards. That's one of the emphasis that he's trying to improve on this year is taking better care of the football. Last year he had 13 interceptions. This is the ninth play of the Falcon drive. Second and ten. Joplin spit wide to the top of the screen. The inside handoff and not much room there down at the ten yard line. That was Pettigrew again. Picked up about three on the play. Remember, their top rusher, Samuel, is on the sidelines. He was getting checked out a couple of plays ago. You feel that swagger that Florida had to open this game defensively? We were raving about a front seven that was so dominant, and they are. This is a really good group. And statistically speaking, they've done just fine today. But this Bowling Green team is taking away a little bit of that swagger and confidence by getting this game to the fourth quarter in a dogfight. Third and eight. Schultz over the middle. Incomplete. And through the arms of Johnson. Just missing. 
And on comes the field goal unit. They took a shot into the end zone. Remember now, uh, Steven Stein comes in, who was a late 8 of 11 last year. He knocked one off of the upright earlier. He missed one from 31 in the first half. There it is. He's going to have another angle to deal with as a left-footed kicker here as well. From 29 yards out. And he shakes this one again. That one wasn't even close. And a little after the whistle activity gone in the field. No flags thrown, but another golden opportunity falling by the wayside here. That's debilitating. You should have the lead right now. Those are two field goals that are gimmies. Those are within your range. They have two kickers. Stein is the short kicker. The execution in front of it, the operation is just fine. The timing, the hold. Those are two misses and two misses right now. They're the difference between Bowling Green up three and down three. A calamitous right. outcome for Bowling Green. Your margin of error is so small when you're on the road, especially playing at a place like the Swamp. And with 146 to go in the third quarter, the deficit remains three for the Falcons. First down and ten, Driscoll in at quarterback. Gillisley on the run. And he picks up about two or three yards. Brock, let me ask you this. How surprised are you that it seems like at this point, we haven't gotten to the fourth quarter yet, that Driscoll is the guy from here on in? It didn't seem like Brissett got that much of an opportunity, only ten plays. But neither of them really distinguished themselves, and Coach Muschamp has told everybody that I'm going to play both in the first half, and then I'm going to try to roll with the hot hand. And you wonder if he struggles on this drive, and it's yet again a lack of execution, do you turn it over to Brissett and what's going to become a critical fourth quarter? Second down and eight. Driscoll to pass. Completes it to Hammond. And Hammond steps out of bounds, shy of the 30, about the 28. The one element I'm a little surprised with, when we sat down with Brent Peace yesterday, and if you remember what he did at Boise State, it was shots downfield. It was the number of times he was so aggressive. And other than Brissett's long pass down the field, incomplete that we showed earlier, we've not seen that. And I think because of that, you see a Bowling Green defense right now that has a forward lean everywhere that is just not threatened or intimidated by anything the Gators are going to do in their passing game. Third and short. Fumble. It's loose. And Hines recovered it, or maybe not. He fumbled it. It's still loose, and Bowling Green comes up with the fumble recovery. Hines put it on the ground, and the Falcons will have it in great field position at the 30 of Florida. That's the first turnover of the ball game for either team. We had the graphic earlier of how Bowling Green could win. Their veteran players, their quarterback. I'll tell you how else you win on the road. You capitalize on a dozen penalties by Florida. You capitalize on fumbles and lack of execution. You take advantage of some of the gifts that Florida's given you, and that is a gift right now. Working with a short field at the 30-yard line. Anton Samuel back in the ball game. The team's top rusher, freshman of the year last year in the match. Can they capitalize? Schiltz completes it to Gallon. Picked up about eight on the play. It'll be second down and short with 36 seconds to go in the third. The one thing you begin to wonder here, Warren Ruggiero, the offensive coordinator, working in unison with Dave Clawson, you have watched your kicker miss two gimmies. Does that start to change the way that you attack here with your play calling? And realize, and I can't just settle because nothing's guaranteed, not even a 30-yard field goal right now. Let's keep an eye on the play calling and the attack here. Samuel, nowhere to go, broke a tackle. And brought down at about the 24-yard line. You talked about the difference in play calling. What will it look like? I mean, wh what kind of differences might you be looking for? That would be an early downs, some shots at the end zone, instead of a couple conservative calls. But most importantly, it's that. It's getting the game to the fourth quarter with your team having every opportunity to come in the swamp and do what nobody, and I mean nobody, thought you could do.
Welcome back, everyone, for the final 15 minutes here in Gainesville. Florida leading by a tenuous field goal, 17-14. This a defining play of the game for the Bowling Green Falcons. Third down, three to go. Martin in the backfield. Schiltz dropped and picked off. Intercepted by Roberson. And the second turnover of the ball game. This one goes in favor of the Gators. Off the hands of Joplin. The two veterans on this Bowling Green offense and the two roommates just miss. And you can see the frustration there. And Dave Clausen tell him to pick his head up. This is your redshirt junior receiver. Men in his face. They've been in Schultz's face all afternoon. Perfectly thrown ball. Absolutely not. A play that you hope your veteran receiver can make and come down with. Yeah, you sure do. Instead, it's tipped. And there you see the level of athleticism that Florida does bring to the table. Back-to-back -back turnovers. The fumble and then the interception. And one of our officials on the field got run over in the ensuing scramble. But that was a pass that was certainly catchable. Boy, Sean Joplin has really struggled today catching the ball. Had two drops at the end of the first half. And then that one costing them an interception. And that's not an easy catch. I mean, that, that is coming at you hot. That's press coverage. I knew that Dan Quinn, you just have a sense that he's going to be aggressive and he's going to press. That's what he did. The ball goes off. Let's see if Florida can finally capitalize. Well, the swamp suddenly coming alive. A lot more boisterous than it was just a couple of minutes ago prior to that interception by Marcus Roberson. It's given the Florida Gators first down and 10 at their own 47 yard line. Mike Gillisley in a tailback, dotting the eye. Jeff Driscoll still the quarterback. He has gotten the majority of the snaps. Gillisley with nowhere to go. Brought down behind the line of scrimmage that time by Jarius Campbell. He'll lose three on the play. Outside just the X's and O's there's times you can just feel the nature of a game and right now Bowling Green defensively As I mentioned on a number of occasions is playing. They're the ones playing downhill. There is no threat There is no fear. There is no intimidation And I think on the flip side you feel an offense. It's gotten tighter as this game's moved along And you really need a big play to, to loosen that up You really need something down the field. You need a positive completion to move the chains if you're the quarterback it's a Florida team that is a lot stronger and more fit than a season ago as Hammond Jr. takes it out to midfield. And Jessica has more on the fitness level of this team. Well, Florida strength and conditioning coach Jeff Dillman's main goal being hired in January was for their fourth quarter endurance and explosiveness. Right now, he just laid into the entire team screaming at them. This is what we worked for in the offseason. This is our quarter. The fourth quarter is ours. Let's do this. Talk about a guy that uh, doesn't lack for energy or enthusiasm. There he is, Dillman. In the fourth quarter last year, the Gators outscored 86 to 59 on the season. Third and seven, Driscoll with time and fires a dart complete. Hammond still on his feet. Frankie Hammond. Touchdown. Jeff Driscoll with his first touchdown pass of the season. A 50-yard strike to Frankie Hammond Jr., who did a lot of the work after the catch. His fourth touchdown catch of his career. And the Gators now leading by 10. Breathing room isn't coming easily today. But a great hand walk and a dash to the end zone. Florida with the lead. Welcome back, everyone, and Dick Sporting Goods kickoff. We continuing with the Chick-fil-A kickoff game. Tonight on ESPN, Dabo Sweeney's 
Tigers taking on Auburn, a team poised to improve on both sides of the ball. And number 14, Clemson against Auburn tonight at 7 o'clock on ESPN, also live on Watch ESPN, presented by Hampton Hotels. And, uh, Sammy Watkins uh, not going to be in that game. They're going to miss him. One of the more dynamic players in college football. Take one more look at the key. What, what do you see different here? You tell me. You tell me if you can see it. The finish of the throw finally saying enough is enough. This game was so hard for three quarters. Let me do what I know I can do. There's a reason this guy was the top recruit in America. He's 6'4", he's 230. And to me, that body language and that demeanor said, I'm going to grip it, I'm going to rip it, I'm going to stop thinking. And then awfully nice to have your senior receiver on the other end finally make a game-breaking play for you. He was fastball that time. This one will come out to the 25-yard line, thus the new rule change this year, but the same old smooth operator in the studio, Reese Davis. Reese. Jones, we check in on the Gators' arch rivals, the Seminoles of Florida State against Murray State. It's one of those, excuse me, openers. You can keep up with the score if you have the ESPN College Football app. Rashad Green's going to take the punt against the Racers and race into the end zone. Seminoles up 7-0. He's caught a couple of passes, too, as Green. Now, big guys in trouble, particularly in the Big Ten. Northern Iowa down five, driving against Wisconsin. Northern Illinois on top of Iowa on ESPNU. An early Saturday of surprises on the brink. Oh, good. Wow. Northern Illinois team last night. <laughs> That's an established crew. First down and 10. Let's see if the Falcons can bounce back a little bit here. Stop made on Samuel by Dante Fowler. Gained a couple of yards on the play. What does Bowling Green have to do to get back into it? This uh, the largest lead of the game for either team. 10 by Florida. We have a player down on the field. That's number 82, Alex Bear, the tight end. This is where, as best you can, as a veteran quarterback, you've got to remember, I can't get it all back at once. I'm not going to get those two missed field goals. I'm not going to get the tipped interception. I can't try to do too much here. Not with 13 minutes to play. This is where the game can really turn, because you force another turnover. You go three and out. You try to fit something in and give the ball right back to Florida. Maybe very difficult to ever come back. So as best you can, Mark, you got to stick within the scheme and, and trust your progressions and your reads. Well, you got a quarterback in Matt Schiltz that has thrown for over 3,000 yards a season ago. Today, 18 of 37 for 147 yards. Missed opportunities. Really key plays. That was going into halftime. This was coming out in the third quarter after a really good drive. And then unfortunately here, he called it a defining play before it happened. The ball is high and behind because pressure is in the face of Schiltz. The ball goes off the receiver's hand, and Florida finally capitalizes. All that one-on-one -on -one coverage, the reason he's able to break one tap tackle and get to the end zone, because of the commitment Bowling Green has made, rightfully so, to stop the run today. Florida finally taking a breath, getting something done in their passing game. And Steven Stein on the sidelines has missed a couple of easy chip shot field goals. Joplin hangs on to the ball this time and is brought down at the 39-yard line. Joplin's had a Tough time today. A couple of drops. The one that bounced out of his arms for the interception that led to the touchdown. He's taking a beating, too. Yeah. This is a different kind of secondary than he's going to face in the MAC. He took a vicious shot earlier. Completely legal from Jonathan Bostic on a slant. These corners that play the game and press and a physical mindset have been all over him today. But a very choppy, uneven day. And something, well, they needed otherwise. They needed their veteran to really emerge. Over 33 yard line, pardon me. Schultz under heat and nowhere to go with that one. Kind of a sidewinder approach. He was fortunate just to get it off. And it's fourth down coming up. Now those slow developing play action passes have just not been productive. When you go back and you look at the play call sheet as they will do tonight, probably on their iPads on their way back to Ohio, any of that movement passing, the slow play action pass has been very, very hard against this very fast defense. Andre DeVos standing at his own 15-yard line for Florida. He might have been the most upset guy in the SEC when the new rule came out regarding the kickoffs. And a nice punt. Sean Schneiderbush. Here's DeVos. And tripped up. Might have been by his own guy back to the 23-yard line, a 50-yard punt. 
Six on the return, atoning for the shank earlier. Gators ball when we come back. ESPN's College Football is presented by Cars.com, where confidence comes standard. And in part by Buick. Experience your kind of convenience, peace of mind, entertainment, and luxury. Great look at Century Tower on campus. Begun in 1953 to commemorate the 100-year anniversary of the founding of U.S. parent institution, Kingsbury Academy in Ocala. It also serves as a memorial for the students and alumni who perished in both World War I and World War II. Pretty clear this is Jeff Driscoll's job. Would you come to the same conclusion? If we take Will Muschamp at his word that both quarterbacks will play in the first half and he'll make his decision. Continues to go with Driscoll under center. Driscoll hands it on. That's Gillisley. Pardon me, Matt Brown up the middle. Do you really think, though, that uh, Jacoby Brissett got a good enough opportunity? I mean, it's always the head coach's call, of course, but he only got 10 snaps. Very difficult to evaluate. Yeah, yeah and, and that's why what we saw today was not the final determining factor that what we didn't see over the last four weeks of training camp and when coach comes back to personality competitive edge athletic ability I think maybe cued us just a little bit that there was a guy that he liked and he wanted to see emerge with this and he's given Jeff Driscoll every opportunity Your center hands it off That's Willisley that time now when, when you look at Driscoll being quarterback, and do you risk losing a Brissett if he doesn't feel like maybe he's gotten a, a quote-unquote great opportunity to win that starting job? You can't think that if you're the head coach. That okay. cannot come into your thinking, and it better not. And if Brissett has learned anything here in his tenure at Florida, expect the unexpected. Starts two games as a true freshman a year ago, as goes back and forth in a competitive situation. If you're Brissett, you better be thinking, hey, I'm going to wait for my next opportunity instead of, boy, I'm quitting because I didn't get a fair shake. On the pitch, nothing but wide open real estate for Gillisley. Got a nice block on the edge by Frankie Hammond Jr. And another first down inside the 38-yard line. Let's go downstairs to Jessica for more on that quarterbacking situation. Well, Jacoby Brissett, when he actually committed as a senior in high school, Jeff Driscoll had already committed, and he said, I'm not intimidated by Driscoll. In fact, as long as I get a fair shot, I know I can beat him out. I think the real question is, and what you guys are asking right now, did Brissett really get that fair shot? He got two starts a year ago, five games as a freshman. He got this entire offseason. He got all of the month of August. That's why I would say be careful about rushing to judgment and taking today as the sole analysis because it wasn't. It was that entire body of work. Good point. First down and 10. Driscoll incomplete dropped by Mac Brown in and out of his hands. Second down and 10 coming up. Jeff Driscoll, the former National High School Player of the Year, actually a Great athlete, former high school baseball player. You know, there are a lot of uh, baseball scouts and experts that feel that had he stayed with the sport, that he was very draftable. He'd been drafted by one of the professional teams out there. And you can see the physical stature. You can see the arm talent. What needs to continue to grow with more experience is just playing fast, playing with that level of anticipation and confidence that he displayed on that third down rip to turn into a touchdown. There's the counter. Gillisley brought down shy of the 40-yard line. Right near that line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and long coming up. Bowling Green needs to get a few plays here, you'd think, from its defense. They got a full complement of timeouts remaining. But the clock now starting to become a little bit of their enemy. You feel like Florida has the tempo, right? In a very favorable situation, to your point here, if you're Bowling Green and an opportunity to maybe pressure the young quarterback into a mistake. If I'm calling the defense, I'm taking a risk and a shot here on third and ten with time dwindling. I want to see him react to a significant blitz. There you go on third and ten. And he's showing it. Dunbar in motion. And Florida calls a timeout. Timeout. Florida. We're going to take one right along with him. Coach Muschamp told us it wasn't going to be easy. We believe him. Well, welcome back. And of course, the prior coach here at Florida, Urban Meyer, had his roots at Bowling Green. 
And the national championships, two of them won here. Uh, Chris Leak and Tim Tebow after that. And now Will Muschamp uh, remaking this program in his own image. But it was a very successful time here at Florida. And uh, if you're wondering about how Bowling Green ended up on the schedule, it, uh, you got your answer right there with the graphic. That pass complete. Trey Burton picks up seven yards on the play. Burton, one of the more versatile players on this team. And another nice delivery by Driscoll. Better. You would still like to see it. Again, that's a perfect example. When he watches film over this weekend, he sees the blitz. They double gut blitz him. He knows where to go with the ball, but just do it a little quicker. Hit him in stride, and he may have a chance to move the chains. They're going to try and a field goal here from about 51 yards out. Caleb Sturgis it was 22 of 26 last year. Five of 10 from 50 yards out. Drives this one. And it's good. He has a career long of 56. That one travels 51. And the Gators starting to put it together a little bit here, including their special teams. Got it by that much. A 13 to nothing Gator run has them leading 27 to 14 with about eight and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. I'm Mark Jones along with Brock Hewitt and Jessica Mendoza down on the sidelines. Week one beginning in earnest of college football and what a journey and compelling season it'll prove to be. No doubt as we take you across the ESPN platforms and networks and take you all the way to the national championship game. Down the turnpike about four and a half hours, five hours from here in Miami, Florida. You know, well played. I thought well called game last night by Rod Gilmore, Carter Blackburn with Michigan State. Boise State can't wait for what follows us tonight. Michigan and Alabama, Clemson and Auburn. Who do you like tonight, that Michigan Alabama game? I like Alabama. Going with the SEC. This one will come out of the end zone and start at the 25 yard line as we kick it back to Reese in the studio. Reese. All right, Jonesy, time for Sports Center right now, presented by Discover Card. Bill O'Brien's debut, Penn State loses to Ohio. Tyler Tettleton had a huge day, over 300 yards passing as the Bobcats came from behind, won it by 10. And it's been a day of some of the big guys getting knocked off. Nevada, the Wolfpack, they strolled into the house of Cal and won it 31 to 24. Stephon Jefferson scoring three times, including that one. All right, Reese, first down and 10 for the Falcons, starting it off at their own 25-yard line. Little play action. And nowhere to go. He's outside the pocket, so he can toss that one away. Good pressure up front by Josh Evans, the safety. And this is desperation time now if you're bowling green and trying to take a shot down the field. I talked earlier down just 10 with 10 minutes to go a little different mindset you can't get it all back at once but Dave Clawson knows now got to have some significant plays and some shots down the field to try to turn this momentum that's clearly on the side of the Gators right now second and 10 handed off to Samuel with nowhere to go this is going to be a really good Florida team this year and in the SEC if they can play from ahead. And that right now is a very big if. This is a good Bowling Green team. They should get to a bowl game. But when you get to SEC play, and over the next two weeks at AM, at Tennessee, you've got to play much better offensively than you showed on opening day. You've got to cut out the silly penalties. You've got to avoid, obviously, the turnover. But if this group, if Will Muschamp's, Muschamp's team can ever play from ahead with this D-line, and the way and the speed and the aggressiveness of the secondary. They've got a shot. Third and long. Pass complete to the tight end, Bayer. And Bayer out near midfield at the 45-yard line of first down for the Falcons. A gain of 22 on the play. And meanwhile, uh, you look at Bowling Green. This is a team uh, that has looked improved from a season ago. And speak of taking a shot. Your quarterback got yet another grass stain. And... Alex Bear had 20 catches a season ago. He's a nice weapon at tight end. Schultz isn't giving up. He's not going anywhere. And that was a critical third down to keep Hope a little bit alive. 
Schultz. Incomplete. That one intended for Chris Gallon. You know, Bowling Green a couple of years ago uh, when a disappointing 2 and 10, but they had redshirted a lot of their players who now are upperclassmen and uh, improved to 5 and 7 a year ago and looking to make that leap again and improving again this season. And a better weekend for the Mac. You look at what Northern Illinois is doing. They're giving Iowa a game right down to the final wire. Ohio, as we've referenced a number of times, have won. And Bowling Green came in here and pushed Florida right into this fourth quarter. Shields completes it to a slot receiver, Ryan Burbrink. Picks up about five on the play. It'll be third down and about five to go for the Falcons. Are they looking at uh, its four down territory right here? Is it too early for that? I think it is. I think it depends a little bit, obviously, if this is a sack and it's fourth and 12 and it's desperation. You still do have three timeouts, but if you get into a fourth and short situation, then yes. The ball right at the midfield strike, third down and five coming up. Handed off to Martin, and Martin stopped up way short of the first down. Number 37. So it's fourth down and about six coming up for Bowling Green. And that felt like a call to me that was exactly to your question. Mm -hmm. Two downs to get this first down with field position. Not knowing if you're going to get it back. If you punt with as big and physical and a Florida offense that has finally got it going and whether or not you'd even get it back. So this is go, go time. We have a player down on the far side of the field right at the 45-yard line. Bowling Green is two of two on fourth down conversions today. Got it. Got it. While they attend to the player, we're going to tell you that there's an epic matchup. Cowboys Classic on ABC in Arlington, Texas. A showdown between Nick Saban's Crimson Tide and Brady Hoke's Michigan Wolverines tonight at 8 o'clock on ABC. Center Night Football presented by Windows as part of Dick's Sporting Goods kickoff week. Each season's just a little bit different. We know with Nick Saban, every season he plays tremendous defense. I'll be curious to see if A.J. McCarron can take that next step. Last year it was the defense. It was the real identity. In the championship game, I thought A.J. really made some strides. And good to see the redshirt freshman there. I have a feeling all those replacements that they have on defense might be almost as good as the guys they had last year. That's right. <laughs> Excuse me. That was David Kekuawa, the junior you call it transfer fourth and six this is it for Bowling Green they got to convert and they do nice catch by Stokes Jerron Stokes comes up with the reception to pick up six yards and they keep the drive alive with under six minutes to play here this is a team that was picked finished actually predicted to finish second in the Mac East 20 returning starters from a season ago Schultz throws it a little bit high and incomplete. Intended for Joplin. Joplin, the team's leading returning receiver from last year. You see a little bit of that body language with Schultz there. There have been a number of times that he and his roommate have just been a little bit off. That he can make a better throw, and he knows that, that Joplin can help him just a little bit. That's the conversation that exists between roommates and guys that have been doing this for three years together. There's a flag down at the 31. Here's the call. Illegal substitution on the defense. 12 players. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Still second down. Another penalty against the Gators. That's number 12. This is not in the clear by any stretch. 13 point lead. 540 to go. Bowling Green. The full complement of timeouts. Driving now inside the 40 of Florida. I think you get the sense a lot of this stadium is emptied out the sense that this one is in the bag And I think we're a long ways from it, especially if Bowling Green can take a shot and get a quick score Here they go Schultz Batted away it stayed up in the air for a while and incomplete intended for Joplin But well defended Let's go back to Reese in the studio Coming up the top of the hour, second game of two nights in Atlanta, this time Clemson and Auburn. Tosh Boyd, what a season he had for Chad Morris, the offensive coordinator last year. No Sammy Watkins, he does have Sharon Peak. Ought to be a great one against Auburn tonight. 
Yes, sir. Taj Gibson, one of the great stories last year in all of college football. There's a receiver screen. Pardon me, Taj Boyd. And that one's down to the 32. Stokes again with the reception. Yeah, Boyd uh, really caught fire. Really, is he one of your Heisman guys this year? I mean, is he on the fringes? Is he there? Think, sure, I think he, with his production a season ago, he's on that list. I don't know if he's in my top five. Schultz behind his roommate that time, incomplete intended for Joplin. I'll tell you what, Geno Smith of West Virginia had himself a day today. Mountaineers with an easy win against Marshall, and he racked up some great statistics. He's going to get an opportunity now in that Big 12, and saw a lot of the Big 12 a, a year ago. Outside of Texas, there's no Florida defense within that conference. Second down and 10 for the Falcons. Schultz, a little bit of contact, and no flag intended for number 81, Chris Gallon. Purifoy on the coverage. It'll be third and long. Who else do you like as uh, potential Heisman candidates? The guy out there at USC has got an awful lot of talent around him. Matt Barkley and experience, and you add yet another 1,200-yard rusher to that stable. Keep an eye on him and his silly numbers he'll put up. That pass complete. You're going to mark it just inside the 25 at the 24, still short of the first down. No doubt they're going to go for it here on fourth with 5-10 to go. Three timeouts remaining. They've converted all three times previously on fourth down. They don't have any choice but to, to convert here. They call a draw, and they come up short. That one was blown up seemingly in the backfield. I was the freshman that they're really high on. That's Dante Fowler, 6'3", 277. And a nice job of read and recognize and then punish and finish. You pointed it out in our production meeting yesterday. That number six there, Fowler. They've got all these cats that wear single digits. You know, Jacobs and Easley who are just monsters up front. And they'll it, get number it's incongruous. Seven, yeah. <laughs> and, and number seven, Ron Powell. They'll get back in October who athletically may be the freakiest of them all. I'm not going to say the most dominant performance. I think Florida will look better defensively this year. Certainly if their offense can give them some help, can give them some time of possession, and allow them, as I said earlier, to play from ahead. You like the way they're built and constructed. It's all in their front four, very fast on the back end. Willis Lee got in the eye of tailback. First down and 10. Driscoll hands it off to him. Gillisley brought down at the 28-yard line. Gillisley had himself a pretty good game today. A couple of touchdown runs. And this is maybe an ideal game for Will Muschamp. In what sense? In the sense that he wants to run the ball, and they did that today. And they did it against heavy box counts. And there's also a ton of mistakes, a ton of errors coming out of week one to clean up. And, and I think this is probably the time, and since we didn't bring it up through the first 55 minutes of this game, to realize you have a new system in place. You have Brent Pease bringing in an entirely new philosophy, language, scheme, trying to find the different roles and fit the puzzle pieces together. Maybe not a surprise. They hit some bumps in the road in the first time out. Still hands it off to Gillisley again. And uh, everyone knows about the documented success that Peace had at Boise State. And when Charlie Wise left for Kansas, Will Muschamp said that he got on the phone immediately and uh, Asked for permission to speak to Peace, uh, which he did. Was impressed with his body of work and his resume, and had been familiar with him throughout the years. He would really like to finish off. This is your four-minute drill. This is your fourth-quarter statement: bigger, stronger, faster. Try to finish this game off the appropriate way. And keep it on the ground. Number 23. Third and short. It's going to be fourth and short coming up as we approach three minutes to go. Whistle and a timeout called. Don't forget, folks, following us, Clemson and Auburn. They will kick off at 7.05. ACC against the SEC.
This has got to be a punt here. I know that Will Muschamp has not yet called on the punt team, but there is no reason to go for it here, in my humble opinion. This is still a 13-point game. Crazier things happen. Three minutes, Bowling Green, two timeouts. Why would you even take the risk here? It's your own 33-yard line to go for this one. Well, Muschamp's team last year was 105th in total offense. Uh, you think they answered as many questions offensively as they wanted to today, not only at the quarterbacking position, but, you know, they're missing the, the big home run hitters like Chris Rainey and Jeff Dempse. That body language <laughs> is your answer. That is a definitive no. That is a we have got to get so much better in so many phases. You take away the one completion to Hammond, the play that he made, the missed tackle. What have you really done in the pass game at all this afternoon? And then in critical moments, third and one and fourth and one, that was a third and two. He also came up short. I think Brent Peace's body language says it all and answers your question definitively. Punted on fourth down here. Christie Burbrink back deep. Burbrink fumbles it, gives it away, and Florida will get it back. Or maybe not. Looks like. Bowling Green may have gotten it. And, and a couple of injured players, Florida players on the field. Looks like it's going to be Florida football, though. Still no indication from the official. This is Florida's ball. Burbrink fumbled it. And Drew Ferris, the long snapper, made the recovery. And looked to be down. I think that is going to be the call on the field. As his collarbone is tweaked and lower leg injury. The ruling must be on the field that he was down in the ground, could not cause that fumble. Right. Looks like Josh Evans, number nine, was limping off. One more look at it here. Now, Burbrink never had it. He has possession and the knee down. It's a good call. And should allow now Florida yet another opportunity in their four-minute drill to finish this game off and finish yet another point of emphasis for not just Jeff Dillman and the strength coach, for Will Muschamp, <laughs> the head coach, for Brent Peace, the offensive coordinator, as I said, plenty for the Gators to go back and work on. Folks, don't forget, coming up on ESPN in just a couple of minutes, they'll be kicking off between Clemson and Auburn. And then on ABC later tonight, Michigan number eight taking on number two, Alabama. Driscoll still in at quarterback. They're going to use his legs here on this play call. Nice move. Jeff Driscoll. First and goal. A 21-yard burst. And that's the tool that he has in his toolbox. A good fake. A tremendous athlete you referenced earlier is a baseball player out of high school. Dual threat quarterback, 1,800 rushing yards his senior year of high school. Very adept in those situations. It's going to be fun to watch him grow in confidence when he can really cut it loose and let it go and let all of those physical attributes come to play. Under center hands it off. Gillisley tries it right up the middle and is met with a lot of resistance. Number 23, Mike Gillisley. About two and a half minutes to go. Clock still running. Bowling Green deciding not to use the timeouts here. Florida's going to get its 23rd consecutive season opening win, one of the longest streaks in all of college football. And a good day for Mike Gillisley, a guy who really is a monument to patience, waited three years to finally get his shot as the number one guy, playing behind Chris Rainey and Jeff Demps, the Olympic sprinter now with the New England Patriots. Driscoll 
throws it away. Third and goal coming up here at the Swamp. Mark Jones along with Brock Heward and Jessica Mendoza down on the sidelines. You just talked about and referenced the patience that Gillis Lee would have and has had in his career. You know what I would love? I'd love for him to have a conversation with Jacoby Brissett. Mm. Today, tomorrow, Good this point. week. Waiting his career turn. as a Gator isn't over. That just because this decision didn't go his way today, he's a Gator through and through. He needs to stick it out here and continue to compete. Gillis Lee knows about waiting. Nothing happening on that run, though. To the five yard line. But it'll be fourth and goal coming up. Florida with one timeout remaining. Bowling Green. Not going to use their timeout. And let it run. Well, the Gators next week will take on Texas A&M, the newest member of the SEC. And Will Muschamp will go back and look at the tape and examine his quarterbacks with his offensive coordinator Brent Peace and probably take a timeout use every second here and get Sturgis on the field and a little bit of a disadvantage for Will Muschamp How Texas so? A&M's game postponed and suspended a new staff and Kevin Sumlin introduction into the SEC not maybe knowing exactly what Texas A&M is going to throw at them and what I thought was going to be an incredibly competitive event with Louisiana Tech week one and they're going to have to play a lot better than they did today. Right. Can Still Kevin Sumlin at Texas A&M run the same type of stuff he did with Houston as wide open as they were? Will that work in the SEC? At least he's got some people up front returning. The strength of their group is that offensive line, which should give them an opportunity. And that's what he knows. Yeah. Typically, coaches do what they know. He knows how to throw it. And they will certainly test the Gators with that arsenal next weekend. Sturgis in to attempt the field goal. This one's going to come from 28 yards out. He's connected from 51 and 34 and misses this one. Not the way you want to finish a game off. You want to be clean in your execution. You hit a 51-yarder earlier, 22 of 26 a season ago. Pressure right in the face of that kick. Might have been tipped. Maybe not. 44 seconds to go. Matt Johnson in the ball game now, quarterback for the Falcons. And he slings it complete. So he's on the stat sheet. Matt Johnson gets it to Gallon. A little breathing room here with 37 seconds to go. Matt Johnson, just a red shirt freshman, valuable reps, as meaningless as they may appear in the final outcome. For a red shirt freshman, as you said, to sling a few of these balls out there. Six foot tall. Not your prototypical guy, but. The guy they really like his gamesmanship very productive 39 and 5 in his high school career a winner and he'll relish these chances yeah. hey what does Bowling Green take forward to next week against uh, Idaho who's their opponent next week because after Idaho their schedule that's a little bit more difficult and testy with Toledo West Virginia, and Virginia Tech that's Virginia exactly Tech. right well you hope that you come out of this thing physically and I'm not seeing a ton of injuries today but that's that's your first hope that you come out of a very physical affair on the road in this heat and humidity and you come out of it okay in that way to take on an Idaho team that lost to Eastern Washington yesterday you've got to take advantage of that one and then as you said Toledo Virginia Tech very difficult battles schedule not an easy one but I think a lot to build on today for Dave Clawson and his group who matched much of the physicality and who have a veteran quarterback that knows how to play the game. A lot of great football coming up today on ESPN and the Family of Networks. Clemson Auburn kicking off. Hey, remember the game in 2010? Clemson lost 14 straight meetings, but came out strong. Auburn rallied from a 17 0 deficit to take the lead late in the first half. Three touchdowns in the third that quarter. Was that he quarter? wasn't bad. He did pretty good. Came down to overtime. Chandler Canzaro missed a do over kick wide left to tie. Auburn winning in 27.
to 24. 16th ranked Auburn mm. at that time. You think they lose that one? They have any shot at winning the national title that year? What a run it was for them. It's incomplete. It'll be fourth down with 21 seconds to go. Who do you like tonight, Mark? Alabama, Michigan. I'm going to go with Alabama. I like, uh, like what they've done at, at offense. And, you know, Nick Saban, having been in this conference for a number of years now, he runs a very progressive, philosophically progressive pro style system. Uh, the way that they conduct themselves and, and do things, uh, it just makes great plays. Mind you, he does have great talent. <laughs> that helps. That's a really good point. They take their players, and that's what Dave Clawson's trying to do. And he's talking to his redshirt freshman on fourth and 15. He can't run out of bounds. you got to make a play. He's done a nice job of developing his players. Florida on the other side, Will Muschamp. He's a Nick Saban guy. He knows that he's got to develop some of these people, especially offensively. He's got plenty to work with defensively, athletically. But his offense, it still will be a year of development with his quarterback. And that guy in particular who clearly looks like this is going to be his job moving forward and heading down to College Station next week. Jeff Driscoll, former baseball player, didn't play football, tackle football until the seventh grade. Moved around a lot. The young son of military parents lived in Japan for three years. We were both disappointed when he told us that he never learned the language while he was over there. He's too young, though. <laughs> in any language... A win is a win, though. And that's what the Gators are looking at right now. Please don't let this. Oh, I was going to say, Offense, don't let it be a flag. <laughs> Five yards, still first down. Kind of puts a period on the type of day that it's been at times for Florida. Their 14th penalty. And a little bit more film room fodder for Will Muschamp. The Gators will get their 23rd consecutive season opener. It was a good test. It wasn't pretty. There will be plenty to work on, and they better do it quickly. A couple practice days, and then a very difficult trip down to Texas A&M. Final score once again, Florida winning at 27-14, to 14, the SEC over the MAC. Coming up next day, it's already started. Clemson against Auburn, the rematch. There's been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Jessica Mendoza, Brock Hewitt, I'm Mark Jones saying good night from Gainesville.